Hey guys, Darth Clark here, back with part 78,812 of our Everlasting Summer playthrough. No, it's part 8. Anyway, welcome to part 8. So, last time we hit... Was it Lena? Uh, Living the Dream, which was Lena's good ending. Now, although it was a good ending, it was a little less than, a, it was a little less than we could have hoped for. Uh, because, uh, you know, the whole experience, the journey was so rough, the destination might not have been worth it. However, uh, we got through it, so it's fine. And now we are finally free of the Alyssa Lena situation. Uh, and now we are finally on the other side of that hump. And now today we are doing uh, Attack on Pedo Bear, Olyana's good ending. What that means, I have no idea. Uh, but whatever. The point is, that's the ending we're going for. We're going for Olyana's good ending. So, you know, I am pretty neutral about Olyana. She's just young or whatever. I already don't, I already, I'm, I'm already more hyped for her ending than Lena's and Alyssa's. I can already tell you that. Mostly because Lena's and Alyssa were like kind of intertwined with their issues. And Lena w was so insane, way more than she seemed, that it was just maybe not worth it. Like we got through it and a good ending and that's great, but man, what a journey. <laughs> anyway, so we're back. So let's just hop into it. Heaven knows we have far enough to go. You know, uh, okay, so our first choice is on day one, we're going to attempt to take the cutlet. So, sure, I'll come with you. Why? Because it doesn't matter. You know, it's a good thing we have control. Good thing we can fast forward through this. Uh, reply, because it doesn't matter. Keep her going. All the way. I don't, I wonder if this will be on the shorter side like Lena's was. I don't know if this will be, I wonder if it'll be on the shorter side. Okay, attempt to take the cutlet. I think this is, I think this is new. I reached, I looked at her menacingly and was about to reach out my hand. See, I don't have it. And indeed, Oyana's plate was empty. It seemed that this little girl eats as fast as she steals someone's cutlets. Take it easy, we'll work something out now. She grabbed my plate and ran off. Okay, and after that, nothing new. So let's roll, there you go. Uh, and like I mentioned this earlier, like probably several times, we'll take the keys, cause it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll praise the book, cause it doesn't matter. Keep going All right, on day two. On day two, we're going to the canteen. First choice that matters, going to the canteen. Anyway, there we are. So, uh, so completely lost my train of thought. So, uh, I mentioned this earlier, but I think most likely the farther we get, the less new stuff there'll be, which is honestly easier for me. There's less reading for me, first of all, and second of all, it makes it faster, and I'm okay with that, because technically this should be our side game, so, uh, and obviously my voice gets tired. <laughs> my voice gets tired after reading for so long, so I'm happy if it is shorter, so anyway. Uh, okay, so what am I supposed to do here? I'm supposed to go to the canteen. Okie dokie. Nonetheless, I decided to go have lunch. The checklist isn't going to run away, I'll get it signed later, while my stomach clearly won't wait till dinner. With these thoughts, I entered the canteen. There was almost nobody inside. Apparently, most pioneers had lunch already. A lunch lady of impressive proportions provided me with a glorious meal of three dishes. A soup, some sort of broth, a goulash uh, from something or other, garnished with potatoes boiled according to the craziest fashion of uh, some sort of century, and a periodic table compot. Hardly a menu five-star restaurant would envy, but I was too hungry to care. After all, compared to my usual meal of ramen and mac or macaroni and cheese, this indeed wasn't too bad. I would, I don't like anything he's mentioned so far, and I would take the macaroni and cheese just on principle. Anyway, I sat on the nearest table and concentrated on chewing. My focus was soon disturbed by a sudden mighty slap on my back. I even choked. Ilyana was standing in front of me with a vicious look on her face. Or victorious, not vicious. I'll choke the life out of you one day. Catch me if you can. She stuck her tongue out. You tried once and you couldn't. All right, then I'll ambush you somewhere. That's not fair. Look who's talking, Miss Fairplay. I grinned. Okay, you wait. I'll get some food and come back. We'll eat together. Uh, I could do without such company. I better hurry up with my lunch. However, Ilyana came back after just half a minute. She had a huge roast beef on her plate and a few large boiled potatoes. Compared to my royal feast, how do you, how, where did you get that? Gotta know, gotta know places. She looked at me and grinned with all of her 32 or however many she had teeth. I won't stand for this. Never was a monster, master, I would never was a master of pranks and in school I often found myself on the bullied side. Dude, freaking same. But I had to get back at her somehow. And what if Olga finds out that you're stealing food? I'm not stealing, she flared up. 
That's what you're going to tell her. I wonder if she'll believe you. And how would she know? Well, that depends on many things. Like what? Oyana looks at me in the eyes. Bring me a bun, a sweet one. Where am I supposed to get it? Well, the same place where you got all of this? I pointed at her plate. She hesitated. All right, one bun. And promise you won't tell Olga. You have the word of a pioneer. She ran off towards the kitchen. Without hesitating, I opened the, pe the pepper box and emptied it into her drink. Oh, dear. Just as I finished, the restless girl came back. Here, racketeer. Looks like she didn't notice. Okay, now who drinks his compot last carries trays? Don't be silly. Silly, watch me. I won't play these childish games. Look who's talking. I smiled maliciously. Huh, you watch me then. One, two, three. She didn't even let me grab my glass and in one quick motion down her drink. Yeah, that's going to be a mistake. Yep. Yep. In just one second, her expression changed to that of authentic terror. Her cheeks went red and her eyes were about to pop out. She jumped from the table and rushed to the table with the drinking water, spitting and yelling as she went. You, you, you! I decided not to wait for her and went outside, giggling to myself without while finishing my bun. Yeah, you know, whatever. I have, I've never been a prank person, so I'm never like, oh, haha, this is awesome. Like, I just, I've never been a prank person, so they are never enjoyable to me. Well, either on receiving end especially, but I also have never done any pranks to anyone because I hate it. So it seems a little hip seems hypocritical to do anything else. Anyway, so yeah, never been a prank person. All right, fast forward. So the next thing we're looking for is we're going to, again, it doesn't matter. Uh, we are going to lose the tournament to, we're not going to bet with her. We are going to lose the tournament to Ulyana is what we're doing next. We can skip the tutorial. Okay, we are supposed to lose against Ulyana, right? Lose the tournament to Ulyana. Okay. Let's just give it a safety save. I have learned the value of these. Okay. Uh, lose against Ulyana. Hey, at least I won a single round. I left the canteen. It was still too early to sleep, and a short walk looked like, looked like a good idea. All right. So is this new? Okay. This is... Nope. It's not new. Uh, oh, no. It is new. Okay. Uh, go to the scene is what's next. So I'm willing to bet none of this matters... Uh, the square? I I mean, again... Oh, nope, there we go. I just saw it. As soon as I was about to save. There it is, right there. Go to the scene. The events of the past day kept flashing brightly in my head. That stupid, useless checklist, the foolish tournament. Tonight, I had no intention of doing anything or to talking to anybody. It said, go to the, go to the scene, and I was like, I don't know what that is, but like, you know, I already, you know, it probably doesn't matter at all. It'll come up later. And then I just glanced. I was like, wow, it's literally labeled scene. The investigation of my complicated situation was the last thing on earth I would do this evening. I headed to the north. At least that's where I, that's where I thought it was. It was my habit from my youth to go to the north. I like this part of my hometown more than the southern districts. Traveling to the Black Sea resorts was never my thing either. Boundless forests and fields were much closer to me than beaches and barkanas. Several minutes later, an open-air stage consisting of several wooden benches and a platform appeared before my eyes. I climbed onto the stage. So much varied musical equipment, loudspeakers, and a microphone stand, and even a piano. I imagined a crowd of people in front of me, everyone screaming, shouting my name, myself blinded by the spotlights. I imagined a guitar in my hands and attempted to play a song, a long and striking solo. I suppose it looked pretty funny from a stranger's point of view, a weird guy swinging his arms on stage, jumping around like an ape and making faces. I hope no one sees me here. Someone's about to. There you go. Hey! Piped up from somewhere above. What the... I looked up and saw Yana hanging from a beam under the stage ceiling. And what are you what are you doing here? I'm just denial is obviously futile. You saw it, didn't you? I said in frustration and turned away. Oh, I see a wasted guitar talent in you. I said nothing. Hey, come on, don't frown. It was funny enough. She giggled. Funny enough, huh? I huffed. Yep. Oyana answered calmly. Uh, come up here, dude. Where to? To me. I ain't gonna get up there. Don't even try to convince me. Not that I have a fear of heights, it's just that climbing up there is pointless, isn't it? No, just get over here. I felt in my bones that something was going wrong, but still slowly headed her way. When I found myself standing un under Ulyana, she cried out, Catch me! Good lord. And jumped! Thousands of thoughts flashed through my mind in an instant. How would I catch her? Is it worth trying? What if she dies? What if she, break what if she breaks my, my something? What if she breaks, maybe just breaks something? Why the hell does this happen to me? That's, that's her own fault, no more fooling around. Wow, what a number of thoughts come and go within the blink of an eye. When some, when sometimes many years are not enough to come up with a single idea. At last, logic and self-preservation instinct won the battle and I stepped back. 
Eliana landed gently, tumbled, instantly jumped to her feet, and looked at me with offense. I would have caught her. Holy moly, why didn't you catch me? You didn't get you didn't get hurt, I answered, shifting my glance. What if I did? What if you didn't? What's up with you? Uh, watched too many B-movies recently? So, don't you care about me? She grinned. Well, in this situation, certainly, I do care. I'm flattered. Hey, don't get any ideas. Okay, okay, you're forgiven for the cards, and you are not. I had no time to finish the sentence. Olyana jumped off the stage and vanished into the dark of the night. Yep, one more childish trick from the silly girl. Sure, I was worrying about her at the moment, uh, as I would for anyone else in her place. After one again, after once again cursing Olyana in my mind, I headed towards my cabin. Okay, I think that's all the new ones. Okay, next one is on day three. Uh, you know Olga asked me to help her is the next one. Olga asked me to help her. Just, um, sure. Forward! Okay, Olga asked me to help her. Okay, uh, Olga asked me to help her. Who cares is the next one. Who cares? Luckily, again, we've already said that too. Next one is fine. I'll help the sports club. I was hoping that I could escape the obligatory work if I intended that I'm helping, if I pretend that I'm helping the sports club. They obviously had tons of members and could do just as well without a single extra pair of hands. However, I'd better visit the sports ground at least to check in there. Just in case Olga finds out that her ideal pioneer slacks off and dodges community service. You never know, I could imagine worse, punish worse punishments than a public telling off at a party gathering. I wasn't really planning for that to happen. Uh, I was about to say, I, I tried to skip and this is this is new, so. All of a sudden, I saw no cleaning, painting, or repairing, but a football match. They were playing five versus six. Uh, football meaning, like, soccer to Americans. Uh, I saw a, I took a closer look at the players and recognized Olyana. I won't interfere, I'll just watch. The teams were obviously mismatched. One team constantly, uh, consisted entirely of younger kids that looked about 12 years old. The other team consisted entirely of teenagers. Besides, they had one extra pair, a player, Olyana. Mind you, uh, what could just one extra person, moreover, one girl do? Okay, don't, like, don't think that because she's a girl she can't play soccer. Like, anyone can kick a ball. Don't be sexist, bro. Soon enough, I realized that I was mistaken. No kidding. Oyana had a good dribbling technique, cutting through the defenders one by one. She obviously lacked teamwork skills, but they weren't, re they weren't even required at this level. She scored with inevitable regularity. I came closer to the pitch. Hey, come and join us. They're short one man on their team. I guess that's what counts as community service here. We've already finished everything, said Oyana, she's sounding insulted. I looked over the sports ground again. The benches were freshly painted, new nets placed behind the goals. How did they manage to get through all this stuff? Come join their team. Well, given that I escaped the last time, I should indeed play now. Ball at the center, we start. With the very first touch, I put the ball into the top corner with a delicate strike. Actually, it wasn't that it wasn't that difficult. The pitch was at most 50 meters long, and a goalkeeper of the opposing team couldn't even reach the crossbar. Sometime later, we tied it up, despite our team being seven or eight goals behind at the start. Objectively speaking, one should note that Oyana's team scored a couple of goals during my time here too. More precisely, she scored. One one couldn't say that she had someone's tricks or or precise Beckham's shots in her pocket. She would just kick the ball into open spaces, and coming up towards the goal, she just toe punted every time. However, such a dull strategy bought, brought positive results. I couldn't keep an eye on every opponent, and my teammates were not much help. Certainly, I played better than all than all of them, and theoretically, I could have scored as many times as I wanted, but it seemed unsportsmanlike to me. Winning isn't everything; it's taking part that counts, isn't it? But that's but after Olyana's words. Uh, penalty shootout, the winner wins the game. I made up my mind that I don't want to lose. At the time, it was 11 to 9 in our favor, so I wasn't reasonable to object. So it wasn't reasonable to object. Uh, you're in goal, I'll shoot, we switch then. Uh, one shot each? Yes. I stood at the line and got ready. We took, she took a run and sent it straight into my hands. That's not fair. What's not fair? I'll shoot again. Okay, just do it, I said smiling. The second shot would go better in rugby. One more time? Absolutely not, she sniffed. But you shall never score a goal against me. We'll see. I, I put the ball into a, the low right corner of the goal with a precise kick. Oyana didn't even move. However, there was no point. Penalty kicks like that are uncatchable. Looks like I won. She answered nothing and just looked at me resentfully. I needed to lighten the mood. Don't get upset. I just... And that's when the music started playing, calling the pioneers for lunch. All right, I'll get even with you some other time. She left, waved her hand, and ran in the direction of the canteen. I juggled the ball a little and followed her. You know, I will say this, though, that uh, she's already way more chill than our previous two happy endings. 
I alre I'm already more relaxed. Who is marching forward in a row? It is our pioneer squad. Pioneers in a row usually march to the canteen in the camp. I, I wonder if this is new, actually. Pause. Uh, next one is stay and help Yana after cleaning up. Okay. Forward! Well, of course, we've already seen that. We've already seen that we we talk with her. She's kind of a little bit upset, but not really. Uh, we run we run out of the canteen, pin her to the ground. She makes a rape joke. We say lols, why not? And obviously, we don't, and we move on. That's not quite what happens, but you know, you get the idea. All right, Slavia left. I probably should not refuse her after everything she did for me, but I was I wasn't made for such activities. Hey, look, it's a party scene. The pioneers kept on dancing. At least they liked the ball. At least they liked the ball. Olga dance too. I consider that not really appropriate. The leader has to keep order around. Oh, shut up. Every, especially since she's not 17. Also shut up. Olga came over to, to me as if she felt that someone doubted her professionalism. She heard you. Why are you not dancing? I don't really want to. Your choice. She smiled cunningly. Then I have a perfect task for you. A task, which is... And the other activities seem better than dancing. You cleaned the canteen well today, but I think you haven't fully atoned yet. Huh? Oyana. What? Come here. Oyana came over to us reluctantly. I see that you've had enough dancing for a long time to come. No, I haven't. She was she was sweating like a pig, so it seemed like the leader was right. I have a task for you and Semyon. But Olga, uh, Oyana begged. It's dance time now, and it's late. It won't take much time. Uh, Slavia was sorting the books in the library, but hasn't finished. You only have you have only a couple of shelves to do. But no buts, for goodness sake. I don't like public work, but dancing, I'm ready. Good job, Semyon. That's my boy, a real pioneer. You should follow his example, Oyana. She He's just happy because he doesn't have to dance. Oyana didn't appreciate such an example, though. So do it. The whole camp is relying on you. I'll remember this, she hissed. The camp in the evening was beautiful. Silence and peace calmed me. Only the distant music from the square reminded that I'm not alone here. And Oyana, who just came back. You should do the cleaning in your dress, though, I grinned. This is all your fault. She breathed heavily, and her face was as red as a tomato, so I didn't so I wouldn't have been surprised if steam started coming out of her ears. You you, it is all your fault. Why me again? If only you'd been just been quiet. What would what would have changed? She'd just make us do it anyway. You she wasn't able to speak normally and just hissed. So what if I kept silent? Do you think that she would have let you keep on having fun? Uh Oyana looked at me. She seemed to calm down a bit. Really, you don't care at all. You can't even dance. So what if I can't? If you had danced with me, it would have been fun. She returned to her usual childlike mode. I might have, but you see how the thing but you see how things turned out. We won't have a chance to see who is a better dancer. Probably good for probably good for uh, Semyon. We pre we approached the library. We we approached the library. It was already dark outside. I was slightly surprised by Olga's request, or more like an order, to sort the books at night. This is so bizarre. That it is pretty bizarre though. She's like, quick, I know it's like 11 p.m. Go sort the books. You're like, why? Like, why right now? Like, it does seem really random. There was no light inside, and the switch didn't work. Unpleasantly clicking with every push. It feels like I feel like I've noticed that that uh, Olga tends to push people together that are that are clearly have a connection right now. At the moment, it's me and Noyana, but I feel like previously it was like you know, hey, look, you and Slavia, and then I mean before she tried to jail us apart, like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, you know, I feel like that she's always kind of pushing you, like, even if it's a weird task, I feel like she's trying to pair you up with people that you're, that you're, quote unquote, working on. So, you know, I don't know, man. It's weird. Uh, it might have actually worked properly, but the lights weren't turning on. Wait, I'll get the candles. I'm surprised she even knew where candles were. I was just about to ask about, uh, literally, what, that's literally what he was going to think, too. I was just about to ask how she knows where, where the candles and matches were when two small lights appeared on the table next to me. That's better. Oyana said, satisfied with herself. What's next? What's what's next what? She looked at me. Oops, sorry. I accidentally skipped too fast. Twice. Uh, she looked at me inquiringly. What will we do next? Pfft. How should I know? She chuckled. Great. I walked around the bookcases. Olga said something about a couple of shelves. I touched the books and made sure that there was no dust on them. It looks like someone did a really good job for us. Obviously, it was Slavia. Having examined the whole library, I didn't find anything to clean. The leader must have, must have made a mistake. Suddenly, I heard footsteps from behind. The old cracked floor was squeaking, so Ulyana wasn't able to sneak up on me unnoticed. Boo! I turned around. Oh my god, I'm so scared, please. Oh, whatever. She turned away re resentfully. It looks really clean in here, so... The dimly illuminated rows, rows of books looked at me re reproachfully. Unknown authors from long forgotten years. I wonder if anyone still remembers them. Xenia must remember. I'm sure that she remembers everything. Okay, sit down. Oyana moved a chair over, over to me. I sat on it. So what's next? 
Let's tell scary stories to each other. We have two chairs, two candles, so there should be two stories. One mine and one yours. Okay. I agreed without thinking. I hadn't the slightest intention of going back to the dance, and going by my experience, there was nothing to do with the camp at night. Especially as I knew a couple of nice stories which would be able to really scare Eliana. And that was awesome. You first. Okay. She made herself comfortable, embraced the chairs back with her arms, and moved the candle as close to her face as possible. That seems a little dangerous. Once upon a time in a village far away lived a boy. Just a normal boy. He went to school, played with other children. There was nothing special about him. One day he made a bet with his friend that he wasn't scared to go to the abandoned house. Liana left a long pause. So what was in the house? Don't interrupt me. Inventing it on the fly. She patted her lips and continued. They say a witch have lived, has lived in that house and people will see her ghost there at night. Nobody knew for sure, but everyone was scared. The boy had said that it was all nonsense and he was ready to spend a whole night in there. So he did, but he didn't return in the morning. He was found hanged. Oliana stopped talking again. Thrilling. Did he hang himself with his shoelaces? I said skeptically. She frowned again. Is it that the end? Of course not. They buried the boy, the way it was supposed to be, the coffin and stuff. His relatives and friends grieved, but they couldn't bring him back. After a few days, people started to disappear in the village. No one knew how or why, they just vanished into thin air. The villagers wanted to call the police, but a friend of that boy who hanged himself in the witch's house told them that he'd seen the boy. No one believed him at first, but people kept on disappearing. <laughs> Ugh, sorry. Then the villagers decided to, to dig up the coffin. There were long nail scratches on the inside of the lid, but there was no body. Where did he go? Liana moved the candle away from her and made a scary face, or at least she thought that was scary. In the end, all of the villagers disappeared, and occasional passers-by near the witch's house tell that they saw two ghosts. Liana blew out her candle and stopped talking. Looks like the story was finished. Wonderful. It's just, yes, all right. I applauded. Not quite Pulitzer Prize worthy, but are you scared? Frightened? Oh, I'm just shivering all over. Oh, whatever. Tell your story then. I'm sure I won't even flinch. I collected my thoughts and decided to tell a story that I had read on a blog of an acquaintance of mine a few months back. He was quite a good storyteller, at least I liked his style, so success was guaranteed. I certainly didn't re remember the story word for word, so I told it with my own words. There's a faraway space station, the last boundary of humanity, located on the border with a hostile civilization, the third month of a ceasefire. I can't, it can't really be called a ceasefire, more like not a war. A small group of survivors is exhausted by a long siege. On one hand, they can't retreat, leaving the outpost. On the other hand, they understand that they won't last even a minute if the enemy attacks. Despair is the best word to describe their situation. The food is running out, there's ammo only for a few shots, which will only seem like grating fireworks. There is only plenty of, there's plenty of uh, air and water owing to the regeneration systems. People didn't talk to each other for weeks at a time. They may just not see the point of wasting their time on communication while death is at the door. Or behind meters thick station armor to be precise. It is really better just to wait for the rescue or enemy's attack. Both outcomes will lead to the end of this torture. The situation looks like a chess game against an invisible opponent. It's the hardest part. End game. Any wrong move will lead to defeat. Yours or your enemies. But does the enemy know about it? They may be afraid of making a wrong move too. Meanwhile, the humans may move their king, but only one square forward and then one square back again. Any other move will automatically lead to defeat. A step forward is an implied threat to attack, and a step backward is a deliberate ne necessity of defense. I think. Uh, the, this, the game would be much easier if the opponent was sitting in front of you. Such an experienced chess player can't hide nervous eye movements, the occasional drop of sweat, or shaky hands. On the one hand, everything is futile. Everyone realizes that the situation is hopeless, because no one would decide to make a move to escape the imminent defeat. On the other hand, when seeing the opponent in front of you, understanding that he is totally like you and can make a mistake, you can more easily stake everything. The opponent may feel the same difficulties. There are the circumstances of a few men and women on the edge of the universe. There are no orders from headquarters for several days. Through, uh, though the last orders had contained nothing useful, only the usual demand to keep on defending. One square forward, one square backward, the swinging of an internal pendulum. At the beginning of the fourth month, the commander decides to retreat. He reasons that the lives of his soldiers are more important than the mythical ideals of humanity. No one would, no one will judge him for this. However, they can't change anything. The penetrations don't take much, preparations don't take much time. <laughs> Dirty minded. Uh, the greatest asset you can save from a sinking ship is your own, li is your life. The whole station crew board the rescue vessel. The launch sequence starts. Three, two, one, and nothing. The bay doors don't open. They send mechanics to check for malfunctions, and they don't find anything. The doors, the doors should open, but they don't open the second time, or the third time. The commander orders his crew to leave the station in rescue pods, but they can't launch either. They explain it as technical malfunctions. The crew tries to communicate with headquarters in vain. 
After a few days, the executive order noti officer sorry, notices that there is nothing on the radar. Nothing at all. No planets, no asteroids, no enemy ships, just an endless darkness. They ran out of food in a month. Everyone thinks that this is the end, but no one dies. Not after a day, a week, or even a month. As if there is no need for food to sustain, sustain human life. At this moment, the majority of the crew goes insane. Some of them just stay in their rooms and pray. Some wander around the station. Some try to commit suicide. But neither point blank shots with a plasma. But I neither point blank shots with a plasma gun, nor hydro tank diving, nor even simply uh, sitting or slitting the veins against gets any results. Days pass by, months or even maybe even years. No one keeps track of time. Insane people recover their minds again and normal people go insane. It repeats many times. In the end, the crew accepts its condition. They start to make up occupations, theatrical staging, sports tournaments, reading of self-written books. A lot of family, a lot of family couples appear and many more break up. It is an infinite loop flow of time, an endless loop of hum of a human life, and only the darkness of the radar reminds them of the empty emptiness outside, but there is an emptiness inside the station too. In the end, people stop living. They just lie in their rooms and sleep. Not 24/7 at first, but as the time goes by, they learn to fall into a trance. Every person has its own has his own dreams. One returns to his childhood, one gets his lost love back, one defends the ideals of humanity with a blaster in his hands. Some others just wander in space. Shabby from uh, skirmishes with the enemy, a rescue vessel docks with the station. The boarding squad gets inside. The whole situ situation or station looks like a piece of scrap metal which was, has floated in space for thousands of years. The reactor is shut down a long time ago. There were marks for the laser shots on the walls. The equipment were all smashed. They found decayed skeletons of people who died horribly, defending the frontier of humanity in almost every room. And only one cryptic message sent to the headquarters implied that something was wrong. Save us. We just we just want to die. I finished the story and looked at Oyana. Her face was concealed by the darkness. So that's the story. I blew out the light. Oyana shrieked, rose up, and threw herself towards me. We fell on the floor. Hey, we're having a moment. Are you guys feeling it? <laughs> whatever. I'm completely un like I don't know. It's whatever. I I'm still more invested than I was for uh, the for for Lena. To be honest, I think Alyssa was a little better, but Lena's was rough. So it's already better. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, what's up with you? Nothing. Her voice sounded very scared. Looks like my story hit the jackpot. I mentally congratulated myself. Liana wasn't having fun, though. She embraced me, shivered, and sobbed. What's wrong with you, you silly thing? I patted her head. It's just a story. It's not real. You and your stupid stories. Liana cuddled up to me more. Uh, were you that scared? Yeah. Frankly, I didn't expect such an honest answer from her. Everything's all right. The time heals all wounds. She calms down. Listen, Semyon. What? Never mind, it's nothing. She buried her face in my chest. Aw, oh, that was so adorable. Minutes passed. Okay, I understand. Maybe we should go? I listened. Oyana snored quietly. Hey, wake up! Can you even fall asleep from fear? Wake up, I said. No reaction. I tried to stand up. Oyana certainly didn't weigh more than 40, ki for the 40 kilograms, but imagine yourself lying under such a weight. It's really not easy to stand up. You would think that Oyana was dead if not for her breathing. I certainly could make more effort. But then I'd wake her up, and it'll all start again. Such an, an unenviable situation. There is the option to wait until she wakes up by herself, though. She certainly won't sleep all the way until morning after such a story. I looked through the window at the starry sky. I wonder if there really is a distant outpost with a ghost crew. My eyes slowly closed in a moment, and I fell asleep. This is incredibly intelligent. This will be so great when Xenia walks in, or Olga, and sees this. What could go wrong? And they fell asleep the whole day! <laughs> Solid! So, next tomorrow morning, there, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be so good. <laughs> Zenya's going to come in, or Olga, or Slavia, but it's going to be disastrous is what it's going to be. I felt warmth in my dream. Yes, that'd be good. It happens sometimes. You, your brain is not completely awake yet, but you feel you can still feel the sun shining in your eyes. And when you wake up, you blink for some time to get used to the light. It was a wonderful morning. I'm sure your back hurts sleeping on the floor. Anyway, the at least my, mine would mine would be. The birds were singing. The fresh air the air was fresh and fragrant, and the world was bathed in sunlight. Daylight. Sorry. I'll st I'd stay in bed for some time longer, but something was not quite right. No kidding. All yesterday's events flashed through my mind. Scary and not so scary stories. Oyana. Meanwhile, still on the floor, who was cuddling up to me tightly and snoring, not quite like a little girl would. But I didn't worry at all. After all, it's still early. Surely no later than seven or eight. Who'd want to go to the library this early? I sat back and looked out the window. In a couple of minutes, the sun will hit right in Oyana's eyes. 
and that's when you're gonna wake up. It's interesting, it's interesting. How did she manage to hug me so tightly? Indeed, I couldn't free myself at all. The theoretically, I was ready to spend one or two more hours lying this way, but suddenly I heard footsteps. Sounds like trouble. Wake up, you hear me? Wake up! I started carefully but insistently, shaking Oyana by her shoulders, trying to loosen her grip, but it was all in vain. Meanwhile, the footsteps were getting closer. I have to save us at any cost. Standing up seems unworkable, but what I learned all what I learned already, so I decided but the or that's what I learned already, so I decided to crawl. My moves stri uh, strongly resembled reservist training, which I never attended. A soldier dragging his injured officer while under an artillery attack. The officer is unconscious, the soldier is exhausted, and the layers of barbed wire surround them. He's like, quick! I barely managed to crouch behind a book stand and hide Oliana when the library door opened. Xenia was standing on the doorstep. She seemed a bit over overcommitted to her work since she is coming in at the crack of dawn. Wait, I heard a familiar voice. Oh, we're in the library when uh, electronic, um, uh, what's the word? Not, 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 not commits, not proposes. What's the word? Confesses, uh, confesses to Xenia. Oh man, this, this will be cool. Uh huh? A visitor? So she does, so she indeed does have a reason to come here. Why couldn't she come yesterday or today, but, or, but, but later? Science waits for nobody. Science. It was electronic. Hold on for a sec. I'll find it. She headed towards us. I barely managed to turn Oyana around so that she was on my back and crawled on all fours to a nearby bookshelf where I collapsed and tried to catch my breath. Uh, what was it? Cybernetics and ma mathematics or mathematical cybernetics? It seems she didn't notice us. I'd like something about the electronic bombardment of photovoltaics. Are you crazy? Why would we have something military? That's not military. That's not military at all. Sorry. Uh, for some time, they both went silent. Xenia, what? Let's go down to the river tonight. What for? Well, just, I have a lot of things to do. Come on, get moving, your robot's waiting for you. Okay. The door slamming was like an epitaph for Electronic's love struggles. Yeah, that didn't go well. So he, he didn't even get far enough to get there. Seems like he is not a cold-blooded robot after all. I chuckled quietly. Actually, this may not have been the, like, the confession. This could have been one of the times where he tried. It's hard to say. Anyway, uh, anyway, laughter seems a bit inappropriate. We have to escape the library somehow. Waiting until Xenia goes for breakfast seems to be the easiest solution at the moment. She's a communist labor worker after all, not one of Electronic's mythical, robo uh, mythical robots. She has to at least eat sometime. Meanwhile, Ulyana wasn't going to wake up. At least she's not snoring anymore. The library was silent. I didn't see Xenia, but was more or less satisfied with the situation. All of a sudden, incomprehensible noises came from her desk. Clicks, cracks, and music started. The Soviet anthem? Just great. It would have been alright if not for Xenia, who started to sing along. Uh, united forever in friendship and labor, I could only envy her patriotic feelings. Unfortunately, she had some vocal issues. The Soviet pop scene definitely d didn't miss out on a star called Xenia. The anthem ended, and an unfamiliar voice started to talk about the overachievements of a five-year plan of crop harvesting. It was the radio, obviously. I started listening attentively. Maybe they would say something interesting. But after the list of agricultural achievements, the voice started to disappear and was gone in a few minutes. Signal disturbance, probably. Xenia stood up and headed towards us. The situation's hitting rock bottom. I managed to unclench uh, Oyana's grip with a titanic struggle. I was free to go, but was so cramped from all the crouching that I didn't have the strength to get up. It's time to prepare for the worst and start thinking of excuses. Suddenly, the steps stopped. Seems like Xenia was standing on the other side of the, of the bookshelf. So, you know, like the equivalent of right here. Uh, I heard the sounds of books rustling. Probably she's looking for something. She took a book and returned to her desk. The door slammed open. Semyon! Have you seen him? Olga, uh, Olga was definitely out of breath. Olyana! No. Xenia answered with surprise. The door was slammed as loudly as the previous time. Seems like everyone is looking for us, and Xenia will start to look around the library. But fortunately, that very moment, the bell sounded in the distance, calling pioneers for breakfast. Xenia, being a punctual person, decided not to linger and left the, libra the library in a few minutes. Th that There was only me and Olyana in the library. Then it was time to decide what to do with her. No longer afraid of being caught, I bent down and shouted in her ear. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. She instantly jumped and started to look around. Noticing me, Olyana's eyes widened. What are you what are you doing here? Playing at spies? Huh? Never mind. Did you sleep did you sleep well? Yeah. Seems she's not completely conscious yet. Or not completely conscious. Breakfast? Yes. Well there you go. That was event that was eventful. We left the library. At last. Now I was certain that I won't have to explain anyone the what, how, and why of Olyana and myself being in there all night long. So I've fallen asleep like that. That's alright. I guess my words sounded too insincere because she looked at me with disbelief. Wait a minute. What were you doing in there, in there all this time? You wouldn't believe me. Wait a moment. That means... Oyana giggled, stepped away from me, and shouted loudly. I'm the first for breakfast. 
Not a big surprise after such a deep sleep, I said, but after o but Oyana already couldn't hear me being far ahead. Alright, I'm not sure if this is new, but what is our next one? Uh, let's see. Stay and help Oyana. So I think next one is got, got food poisoning, so it's after we're at the... Uh, the next one, I think, is when we're at the um, infirmary. It was unusually crowded near the canteen. Of course, there was no other place in the camp that pioneers loved as much as the can loved as much as the canteen. But why were they all crowding on the porch? I came closer and tried to find out what's happening. It looked like all the camp had gathered on the porch. There were all the familiar girls, Olga and Electronic. They were having a lively discussion. I drew closer. Ah, Semyon, where on earth have you been? I waited for you all night long and been searching since early morning. Oliana told me that you left the library together yesterday. I looked at Oliana. She was grinning something. She was grinning. Well, we'll deal with this later. Have you seen Shurik today? No, what's the matter? Okay, and after that, nothing new, so now we can move on. But I stopped by Olga. And you, Semyon, please stay here. Yeah? Would you care to explain what you've been all night? Well, uh, this is the last thing I hadn't thought about. This is the, or this is the thing I hadn't thought about. True, this could have gone by unnoticed. I could have thought of some clear explanation at last, at least, but I hadn't. Well, I, me and Liliana were placing books on the shelves, but then she locked me in there and ran away. I was stuck in there until morning. I was at the li I was at the library today, and I didn't see you there. I'm kind of aware of that. Well, I left quietly. And why is Liliana telling me something completely different? Hmm, what might that be? You know what her stories are like. Yes, you might be right. The camp theater paused for a moment. Just don't think this means I believe you. I didn't think that. I didn't think that. Okay, we'll, we'll deal with this later. I won't forget. Well, it's more important to find Shurik now. Yeah. Dismissed. Uh, yet again, I have no choice where to fit. Okay, I'm not sure if this is new. So next one is the whole food poisoning thing. All right. Forward. All the way. All right. Uh, the boathouse. She tried to pull a fast one. Didn't work out well. Uh, sure, go with, let's go with Miku. Forward! Uh, you look gorgeous in it. Food poisoning? Right, that, that's what I have to say, right? Yeah, food poisoning. Food poisoning? And don't ask, because obviously not. Don't give it to her. She's t She'll take it anyway, but at least we tried. Uh, eat the apple, because I don't think it makes a difference. Forward! Expl explosions and gunfire and people fighting people. Again, there's a. I think that's the second time I've made that reference in the last few weeks. If you if you can place that reference, like explosions and gunfire and people fighting people, if you can pl place that reference, you are officially my hero. I doubt you will because it's incredibly obscure, but you never know. All right, uh, so we're supposed to go with Oyana, obviously. Count me in. I lo looked at Oyana, astonished. Her thirst for adventure seemed to have no limits. Look, night, ghosts, and old camp. It's great. On the one hand, such company always pr uh, promises trouble, but on the other, it feels safer going together. Perfect. Having said our goodbyes to the other girls and Olga, we were left alone. Do you consider this just an entertaining walk? Well, yeah. What's the matter? Oyana giggled. Never mind. Really. I sighed. Oh, ho oh, hold on. I'm going to fetch a flashlight. Okay. That is a very smart plan. I was just about to suggest that myself. It seemed that I would not only have to visit an abandoned camp at night, but also look after a fidgety child. Well, since it's Oyana, I should be twice as cautious. I mean, I wouldn't say fidgety child, because, I mean, child, I feel like, is a little too young. Is it, I mean, isn't, isn't Oyana, like, mid-teens? Early teens? I, I, don't, I don't know how old she is, but this whole thing screams sketchy a little bit. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, wait, no, actually, I mean, in this world, he's 17, so I guess that kind of helps out a little bit, right? I don't know. Anyway, I should be twice. Uh, Electronica told us the old uh, building was built right after the war. Okay, sorry, I accidentally skipped that. It looks like a kindergarten or like a barracks I expected and definitely could hold less pioneers in today's camp. Uh, it had been abandoned for about 20 years. Oyana skipped forward as, as if everything was just a game to her. I mean, have you seen how many times she just bolts like into the darkness or do you really think she's like actually scared i doubt it maybe she'll be more like hesitant when we're inside the old camp building or underground or in the mine or something but in this forest i doubt it i was ill at ease actually that was normal for a person in my situation in the night forest with scary animals and birds eager to swoop down on you the full moon and the whole other world i had come into not not long ago or not too long ago <sighs> what a sissy night is where you're safe man like, it's the daytime you have to fear. I might be better off all alone without needing to look after Oyana, who was running in front of me. I doubt it. Who hasn't... Oh, how hasn't she tripped over something yet? Listen, be careful. 
on or what? She turned around so quickly that I shivered. Nothing? You may hurt yourself. Are you worried about me? Of course I am. I mean, that's normal in a, such a situation. Oyana pouted. Listen, I decided to continue our conversation. It's more relaxing and less scary this way. But what is it about that old camp you were saying back there at the square? Yeah, it's a really scary place. They say that all the pioneers died there and became ghosts which guard their last earthly refuge. Uh, what did they die from? It was kind of a hard to believe for scary tales. How should I know? I wasn't even born back then. But you say it so confidently. I got information from a reliable source. And where would that be from? From Melissa? Not gonna tell you. So what happens next? They died and became ghosts? That's all. How, what do you mean, that's all? And now the souls of the dead pioneers roam around the camp and take everyone who dares to enter the world of the dead. Wow. Okay, move along. Silence. No, sorry. Uh, time passed. We went deeper into the depths of the woods where the trees enclosed everything. Suddenly I realized that the forest had gone completely silent, as if the night birds had hidden in waiting for something, and the insects had dug into the ground, even the wind had died away. I imagined that the streams of moonlight breaking through the thick foliage were ringing like plucked strings. At last, trees parted and we talked and we walked out into a large glade. Middle of the old building resembled a kindergarten. It was shrouded in a thick fog. I know we already seen this. Uh, I shivered and, oops, sorry. According to Ulyana, there were pioneers' souls roaming there. Truly, it was like a mass grave. Okay. I shivered and clutched the flashlight. Ty the oh, oh, God. <laughs> I said flashlight. Flashlight? Sorry, that's a different, that's a different item. I, he's probably not clutching that, clutching that as tightly. Sorry. <laughs> that, that's a, that's a, uh, misspeaking for you. That's, that's hysterical. Misspeaking. I done did there the English good. Anyway. A dreadful place to tell you the truth. Oh, come on. She patted me on the back cheerfully, uh, which only made me more scared. Like I said, man, Oyana's a trooper. She ain't scared of nothing. Only Oyana's the sissy here. I was about to move forward where the moon showed among clouds illuminating the glade, the old camp building, and us. Under that light, everything seemed not so old. The resembling brickwork, rusty slide, and merry-go-round, the few panels of glass that miraculously remained in some of the windows, they all became more vivid. I started to imagine the unknown monsters came out to the glade from the forest, the place of eternal darkness where even the moon can't rain. That's incredibly specific. I hope that they I hope that they fear the light like vampires, though maybe that could turn into giant wolves at full moon like werewolves. Oh, what a baby. Uh, why have you stopped? I'm thinking about what? About how scared he is. Why would Shirt come to such a place? How should I know? We'll ask him when we find him. Yeah, obviously. I mumbled and followed Oyana. She walked more carefully now, looking under her feet, stopping occasionally, and even looking back several times. That's natural. In some places, the grass reached her uh, chest height, and no one knew that or what could be there on the ground. Scrap metal, stone, shattered glass. We finally reached the door. And we finally reached the door. Oyana stopped and said, "Well, here we are. As if as if you'd won a race. This isn't this isn't a game. You're you're what? Boring." Yes, he is. I made a displeased face and stepped conf confidently into the darkness. It was dangerous to let Oyana go first. Dangerous for her, dangerous for me, and maybe even for all of humanity. The inside of the old camp, we know what it looks like. Uh, like I said, we know what it looks like. Look, Oyana gave me an old ruined doll falling apart from the camp. Oh yeah, if you guys remember that we found that doll with Slavia and, your and Sem Semyon mentioned we should give it to Oyana. Anyway, so now it's interesting because now we're here with Oyana. Oyana gave me an old ruined doll falling apart from the camp, one more piece of the past. So what? Nothing. She moved out of the, out of the light, but I noticed, noticed sorrow on her face. As sad, as sad as a cemetery. Scary. I haven't seen anything scary yet. It was indeed more relaxing in here than outside. In rea in rea it, it really was like a cemetery. As you look for a specific grave while looking among countless tombstones, feeling discomfort inside, but then you find it and your soul calms. I don't, I don't feel that in a cemetery. Most cemeteries I've been to are not like... You know, they don't look like evil is lurking there. They look like a place where you where you honor the fallen. All right. Anyway, as you lie next to it, I shuddered and let the and let the flashlight. Let's not make that mistake again. Uh, play around the room. There was no sign of Shurik. However, however, what did I expect to find here? His corpse? Looks like he isn't here. What about the second floor? Shurik! I called loudly, but only my echo answered me. Shurik, come out. S see, we should check anyway. Luckily, at least she's a good person. I mean, deep down. Okay, okay. And technically, Semyon is a good person too, but for him, it's like deep, 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 deep down, but whatever. There was no signs of life on the second floor either. I sat on the stairs and hung my head, feeling doomed. Where to next? We can't walk around the whole forest, and I'm already sleepy. Why do you whine so much? That's a great question. Oyana was irritated, whining and whining, just like a kid. 
Oh, am I wrong? Right or wrong, what's the difference? If we're looking for Sheriff, we must find him. But how, I begged. I don't know, somehow. Yeah, he's the older one. What a baby. Oyana looked like a strict teacher and, and myself like an... What? Looked like a, a strict teacher and my... And I don't know, looked at... And I looked like maybe a careless schoolboy. But shouldn't it be the other way around? I mean, it should be, but you know, you're more delicate than she is. I turned to the light in the direction she pointed and noticed a trap door in the corner surrounded by garbage. It looks like it had been open not too long ago. He must be down there for sure. Well, Yana reached, uh, rushed to the hatch and made a great effort to open it. Why would he go down there? It was probably, I don't know, some villagers? Is there a village nearby? I don't know. Well, Yana replied, breathing heavily. She ha hadn't managed to open the trap door. I started thinking. There was surely a possibility that Shurik might be there. I didn't know much about this world after all. Actually, I knew nothing. Why would, why should the local residents act according to my logic? Could it be that he tried to escape down there, running away from wolves? Oh, what a, what an idiot. What an idiot. Are there any wolves though? Maybe owls? Why would you need to run from an owl? Whatever. Okay, let's check it out. I strained my muscles and managed to open the trap door. Uh, it crashed loudly on the cracked wooden floor, and at the same moment, Oyana leaned over the hatchway, lighting up the basement with the flashlight. It's some sort of tunnel. A tunnel? I pulled her back by the scruff of the neck to look in there myself. Hey! Curiosity killed the cat. There was indeed a long tunnel running into the darkness. It looked like a dungeon from a computer game. There wasn't any danger at first sight. No waist-deep water, no rats, no zombies. Okay, let's climb down there to, ha to look, but be careful. Roger that. Oyana beamed. At least one of you is brave. It was really dark down there. The flashlight did little to help. It dimly illuminated concrete walls, lamps hanging from the ceiling, and tangled in wires. We read this. <laughs> Obviously, we've been to this mine so many times that, like, my patience of, like, describing it is running thin. We slowly moved forward. I held Ilyana's hand, fearing she would run ahead of me. Probably I was a bit worried about myself, too, not wanting to be alone in this thick darkness. Maybe we should go back? Shurik Shur couldn't have gone so far. He absolutely could have. What if he had a flashlight? Well, even with a flashlight, what would he be doing down here? I don't know. Aren't you interested in what lies ahead? Not a bit. I am more interested in... I hadn't finished a sentence. A massive metal door suddenly appeared before us from thin air. I instantly noticed a biohazard sign. A bomb shelter, I realized. Probably. Have you heard of anything about it? I don't know. Does it matter? Does it? What if there's radiation? What, inside the bomb shelter? What radiation? Where from? Yeah, you're right. I took, I took hold of the door's wheel and tried to move it. It yielded, to my surprise, and groaned like a dying dinosaur. The door opened at last, and Oyana ran in there as soon as, as soon as it did. Hey! Behind the door was probably the main shelter room. Uh, there were several beds next to me, some devices near the farthest wall, lockers, fluorescent lamps on the ceiling brightly illuminated the room. Where does the electricity come from? Are there backup generators still working? I turned off the flashlight to save the battery. Oyana started to rummage in the lockers at once, taking out gas masks, packages, various tools. Don't you have anything better to do? No. She looked at me with displeasure. I sat on the neatly made bed and looked around one more time. Right across the room from me was a door, the same as the one we entered. Could Shirk have gone through there, if he was here at all, and why? Why the long face? Just tired, I honestly confessed. Then rest for a while. Oyana jumped at me and pushed me in the chest. I reeled back in surprise and hit my head against the wall. What are you doing? I grabbed her arms and pulled her towards me. She lost her balance and fell next to me. Ow! You started this. Oyana stuck out her tongue and sat up. Well, what's next? There, the other door. Oh, sure. Shirk predicted the nuclear war and decided to hide, be hide beforehand, did he? Maybe he did? Maybe, maybe, this shelter is too close to the surface. It could protect against the radiation, but if the bombs fell close enough... You're so serious about these matters, she smirked. I quickly didn't know when to be serious with her and when to joke. Clearly not. It seems that the age difference between us really matters here. How big is it? Ten years? More? I sighed and stood up from the bed. I mean, I mean, I would, I'd put a, I would, hang on a minute. I would not say 10 years, because remember, in this world, you're 17, okay? So in the other one, you were in your 20s, and this one, you're 17. So not 10 years. What is that like? I mean, again, I'm thinking only a few years. I think she's early to mid-teens, and he's obviously mid to late teens, all right? In this world, all right? And so it counts. Okay, let's try. But that door was less compliant than the first one. The bolts creaked, but the wheel didn't budge a centimeter. Seems jammed. Let me... Oyana rushed to the door with a crowbar she got who knows where, and applied herself to it with all of her unimpressive weight. That gave us a chance. I helped her, uh, and soon the door fell to the ground with a bang. The hinges turned out to be completely rusted. Seems that not everything was made to last back then. 
Behind the door, there was a tunnel almost the same as the one we had come through. Don't do anything stupid. I took Liana by the hand and stepped out of the room. It was another endless tunnel. The ceiling seemed to be seemed to become lower, even though I logically realized that it didn't change. Oyana didn't seem to seem to be seem to be bothered at all, though. She was humming as she walked. It annoyed me more and more. Looks like you're having fun. Of course I am. Aren't you? No, I don't see reason to have fun. We should find Shirt quickly and get out of here. He may not be here at all. Then why the hell? Look, Oyana snatched the flashlight from my hand. You know, she is the driving force behind this whole thing. Semyon continues to be annoying, but at least Oyana, and honestly, I don't feel almost any annoyance towards her. Like, her, her little jokes and tricks, she's not, like, annoying and over the top like Lena and Alyssa were. Like, how it just, it's, be, like, way blown out of proportion. For her, it just seems, like, goofy. You know what I mean? It, it seems less aggressive. I mean, maybe that's just from, you know, like, like, being with them for so long. Maybe it just seems that way, but it's hard to say. Uh, right, a huge hole. He may be down there. She walked to the edge and leaned. Some rails. It looks like there was a mine under the tunnel. The depth of the hole was low enough to let us climb out of it, so I knew that what Oyana would say next. Come on. I wanted to object, but she had jumped down, leaving me in complete darkness. Hey, I had to follow her. I don't know what they dug for here, but the mine had been abandoned for a long time. The planks had become damp, the rails were rusted, earth broke through the walls in some places. The whole tunnel leading into the unknown was suspicious. It looked like it was about to collapse and bury us. Come on. Oyana desperately pulled on my arm. Where to? Why? Why would- what would Shurik be doing here? What if- she made a serious face. What if he's sitting here? What if he's sitting here somewhere, injured, waiting for help, and we just turn around and go, leaving him to die? I estimated the height of the ceiling one more time, and walked slowly after the restless Oyana. A fork in the road! Let's go to the right. Wait. I grabbed her arm. What's the matter? What if it- what if it's a dead end, or worse than a dead end, a whole labyrinth? Well, she thought. Then let's mark the starting point. Ayana picked up a large stone from the ground and scratched across on one of the beams that supported the ceiling. Do you think that'll help? It, w it will. Probably I will. Ha probably I will have to choose where to go. I just can't leave it to a little girl. Stop phrasing it like she is like six, okay? It's not gonna be good for what I'm sure is gonna happen later. Okay. Uh, I just want to double check we're doing the right thing here. All right. So yeah, the next decision is only at like day five. So obviously we saved it this time. So we're not going to get lost in here. Right. And we're going to do it slowly. Right. Easy. Left. We're not making a mistake this time. Right. And right. There we go. Okay. So yeah, this time we didn't misclick and get lost. At last, the ray of the flashlight uh, revealed an old wooden door in the darkness. Here we are. Where? Somewhere. I don't know. But she was right about something, at least we'd gotten out of the labyrinth. After all these turns and forks, I wasn't sure we'd ever make it back, wouldn't we'd ever make it back. But on the other hand, why wouldn't this mine have any exits? Oyana opened the door and started and stared into the darkness. So, you won't go first as usual? Well, okay. I stepped over the threshold. I mean, you are way bigger than her, so how about you just take a chill pill? A small room was beyond the door, maybe a storage room for the bomb shelter. There were bottles and cigarette butts, which meant that somebody had been here before us. It wasn't an encouraging fact by itself, but now I was certain that there was another exit from the mine, since they couldn't have come the same way as we did. The ray of light moved around the room, examining every corner. Suddenly, it lit up a human figure. It was Shurik, huddled up against one of the walls. Hey, there you are. We've been looking for you all night, and you... He seemed... It seemed he hadn't uh, even noticed us, still sitting and mumbling something. Shurik. Who... Who's that? What do you mean, who? Your rescue team. Look, get up. Let's go. I won't go anywhere with you, he mumbled. You'll lead me in one of those tunnels again. I know. I won't go anywhere. I'll stay right here. You won't get me. Stop with your nonsense. It looks like he's gone insane. No, no. You won't trick me this time. Stop it already. I took a few steps towards Shurik, but he jumped up at once and waved a metal rod. Don't come near me. Leave me alone. Calm down. It's me, Semyon. Don't you recognize me? Semyon? No, you're not Semyon. I noticed that Oyana, who was standing next to me, had disappeared somewhere. You're not Semyon, and I'm going to... Uh-oh. In the trembling light, Shurik's hand appeared for a moment. Uh, wielding the metal rod, I covered my head instinctively. Nothing. When I opened my eyes, he had already disappeared. Oyana stood next to me and giggled, holding the metal rod. Just like a scout. Yep, a scout. From somewhere far off in the devilish laughter of Shurik was heard. He ran away. Screw him. I don't care if he dies here. I spat on the floor and leaned against the wall. If it hadn't been for Oyana, I wasn't prepared for that. Shurik might have killed me, but he could have seriously injured me. To be left lying here injured must be equivalent to death. We don't even know which uh, when help will arrive. 
And would they be able to find me in this, in this labyrinth? Why the hell did I agree to come here? Indulging that girl. You look like you're going to kill somebody. If a good candidate presents, it presents itself, Ilyana shuddered. No, not you. It would be nice to spank you, but there is no reason to kill you. She smirked. Yet. Oh, you. Okay, okay. It is definitely time to get out of here. They can send their special forces, rescue teams, ghostbusters, whatever tomorrow. I don't care. Uh, will we go back? I looked around the room once again and noticed a door to my left. Wow. The door was just like in the bomb shelter, a massive metal one. I pulled the wheel a couple of times, but it just creaked dully. Uh, if only I had that crowbar. Doesn't work? Oyana asked in a depressed voice. No. Actually, I didn't have any strength left. In another situation, I would strain myself, ask Liana for help, ask for something to use as a lever, but now I just wanted to get out of the mine. I wanted to hope that there was a path of least resistance for us to take, and that meant hoping that I remembered the way again through the labyrinth. Let's go back. Okay. And she smiled and took my hand. We walked even slower on the way back through the labyrinth. Stones scattered under our feet, water dripped from the ceiling uh, uh, onto our heads, feeling like drops of molten tin. Liana quieted down and followed me in silence. Did something happen? What do you mean? It's strange for you to be quiet for more than a minute. No, everything's all right. But something was wrong for sure. One fork after another. A minute ago, I was certain that the, at the next corner, I would see the cross. Liana had scratched before. I was wrong. My faith in my ability to guide us was melting away with each second. Well, whatever. I decided to distract myself with conversation. It's all right. It's just, what? It all went so wrong with Shurik, and now we're stuck here. You saved my life. You should, you should, you should be proud of yourself. I tried to encourage her, but Oyana didn't seem to get it. But if I hadn't taken his metal rod away, he might have stayed. Whether he stayed or not, what's the difference now? We still have to get out of here, uh, don't we? Yeah, but everything's all right. That psycho will find a way out for sure. I really, w I really was sure about that. Finally, we came to a long tunnel on the, well, on the wall of which was the cross. Oyana cheered up a bit, and we almost ran the rest of the way to the surface. See? The full moon shined above us again, and the building of the old camp didn't look nearly so ominous as before, especially in comparison to the bomb shelter and the catacombs. That was cool, wasn't it? It looks like Oyana got in her usual cheerfulness back. I'm not too sure about cool, but I'm glad we got out. So, shall we head back and look for sure? What? I was speechless for a moment, unable to finish even finish the sentence. Are you crazy? We already found him. Tomorrow, Olga and the police can go down there and catch that caveman to run tests on him. Well, no wells. Back to the camp to sleep. I walked rapidly, rapidly from the dreadful place, ignoring the furious Ilyana. Within ten minutes, we were already back at the square. Okay, that's all for today. Dismiss, soldier. Oyana saluted and was about to leave when she suddenly yelled and started to excitedly wave her hands. Look, look! I turned to the benches and saw Shurik lying on one of them. Oh my. It was really hard to wake him up, as if the caveman had decided to sleep for a year beforehand. What? Where am I? He mumbled in his sleep. You want to explain yourself now? Explain what? We've been looking for you all night, and you jumped at Semyon with a metal rod and then ran away. Oyana jumped around the bench, ready to explode. What happened? And why am I here? Uh, Shurik seemed to come to his senses. Oh, be, do be so kind as to explain that. How did you get out of the mine? And why did you go here there in the first place? Everything, step by step. What mine? There was such sincere surprise in his eyes that I started to doubt. He really might not remember anything. Where have you been for the last 12 hours? I don't know. Shurik, uh, Shurik sat and his face frowned with the effort of thinking. I went to the old camp in the morning. People said that there was some old equipment there for parts for the robot. And he stared at us in confusion. And, and that's all. So you don't remember? I don't. Okay. I sat next to him and leaned back on the bench. Well, it was lo a lot better for Shurik. We, uh, Semyon was less violent this time. The stars shone bright brightly in the sky. And it's like, it really, like, Olyana saved Sh Semyon. Ugh. Like, really? <laughs> like, what? So the, the much smaller and lighter girl saved this guy? Man, like, this guy is pathetic. He's so pathetic. They remember everything. Even what Shurik was doing in the bomb shelter. Post-traumatic shock. Poster what? Such symptoms are experienced by people under heavy stress after a disaster, for example. Shurik remarked with a smart look on his face. You should sleep. You should sleep now. Yeah, but we'll speak tomorrow. I can't believe how calm Semyon was. Like, he was way calmer this time. Last time, he like th he's like punched the dude. He slapped him. He's, lots of things have happened. Uh, Shurik looked at me for some time, but then he got up slowly and walked to his cabin without saying a word. So, what is, it, what is it with him? He probably forgot everything that happened in the mine. He's lying. Look, why would he have to lie? So, he, he wouldn't have to answer for when he tried to attack you with a metal rod, she said uncertainly. 
Doesn't look like it. And does it matter now? It does. We have to find out. The criminal must be punished. If that rule was applied to you, you would have been placed under house arrest a long time ago, or worse. What does that have to do with it? I don't leap at people with a rod. It wasn't intentional. He's lying. He may be lying. I was really exhausted after today, especially especially this night, and I really didn't care whether Sir Shirk was speaking the truth or just pretending to. It really looks like he doesn't, didn't remember anything. I'm going to sleep. Then Oyana jumped up and stood on her tiptoes. Good night. You too. I don't know. It seemed that there was something special in the expression on her face that in that moment, I didn't care. Ah, oh, you, you wasted the opportunity! The camp leader had been waiting for me at home. I thought you wouldn't come back. I wouldn't have expected any of that reaction from Olga, except that one, or any other reaction, since you went with Ilyana. Aren't you, aren't you, weren't you supposed to worry about us? Why should I? You're okay. Okay, then. I had neither the strength nor the will to argue with the leader or to find out the reasons for her behavior. I took my clothes off and crawled under the blanket. It's all too much for a single person. Looking for Shirk in the dungeons was a job for search and rescue professionals. Doing it with Ilyana for, certi for certified madmen. But it was, in a way, fun. I fell asleep with a smile on my face. All right, what what day are we in now? While I look at while I look at my guide here, day wait for it, day five. Okay, go to the clubhouse. Forward. There's that. There's the the fun buzz of success. All right, clubhouse. I was desperately hungry. I always took good care of my health, and even better at the times so of something hurt badly. Uh, and now I was able to walk and my feet weren't even hurting much. So my feet will heal up eventually while my hunger can't wait. I decided to take advantage of Electronic's invitation. In the end, knowing the local pioneers, it was smart to assume that there wouldn't even be a piece of stale bread left at the canteen. And the Cybernetics Club actually somewhat owes me. With such thoughts, I approached the club building and heard screams coming from it. I tried to listen closely but couldn't figure out anything. Give it back! No, I won't! Ilyana was running around the room with a coil of wire in her hands chased by Shurik. Guys, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but give it back! They didn't even give me a bit of attention. No, I won't! Shurik completely caught up on a chase slip past me, almost knocking me down. Hey! Ilyana was running in circles around the room, laughing cheerfully. I wonder what she needs this wire for? Meanwhile, the head of the Cybernetics Club was looking fine even after yesterday's madness. One could say he was looking fresh. And this probably wouldn't help him to catch Ilyana. She was smaller, more agile, and faster after all. She could easily drive him to exhaustion. Hey! There she goes. Ilyana ran up to me and hid behind my back. Shirk, in his turn, left the club, slamming the door on his way out. He was offended, it seems. Hey, what's wrong with you? You won't catch me. She looked at Electronic, who was silently observing all this silly running, and stuck out her tongue at him. Semyon, take the wire away from her. And why do you need it in the first place? You don't have enough wire or something? He was trying to catch Ilyana, who was hiding behind me. He moved to the right when she moved left. He moved to the left when she moved right. In the end, I got tired of this. I grabbed the wire from Ilyana in one dexterous move. Give it to me. Give it back. She shouted resentfully. No, I won't. Stop horsing around. I held the wire above my head so Ilyana, with her height, couldn't possibly reach it. Thank you. Okay, fine. She snorted and turned away from me. Why do you need it in the first place? That's none of your business. Ilyana looked at me slyly. Uh, do you want me to tell everybody that you... I shut her mouth with my hand and dragged her along to the exit. Okay, we need to go. I told Electronic while giggling stupidly. And what did you come for? He's like, I came for food, but we have other issues. Because I saw, like, these two pretty much naked, so that's rough. Sorry, I was taking a drink. But you know the whole hiding in the bushes thing? Once outside, I let the kicking Ilyana free. Hear me out. You realize that it was an accident. Even more so, it was caused by you. I know nothing. Facts are facts. You were watching us. Aw. Er, aw, what would Olga think? In one hand, I didn't want to care in the slightest what the camp leader would say. But on the other, everything was against me. And in my position, it would be better to not get myself into such, such a situation. Fine. Maybe we can make a deal somehow? Hmm. She started to think. I know. I anticipated the worst. You bring me that wire. But what do you need it for? I need it for my needs. Okay, let's assume I get it. You won't tell anyone? I'll give you the word of a pioneer. I could hardly believe her. But on the other hand, it was just a coil of wire, so why shouldn't I try? Oh. Uh, pause. Safety save of justice. And then to the guide. Uh, we're gonna refuse. Uh, I- Don't worry, it's part of the guide. No, no wire for you. Enough already. Then I'll tell everything. You'll tell everything anyway, or Alyssa will. I'll get lost. Yeah, sure, as if it was my fault. It is. You were watching us. No, I wasn't. But no matter how you slice it, I actually was. Alyssa doesn't think so. She doesn't agree with me about a lot of things. And Olga won't be happy either. You know what? 
I started to lose my temper. If you want to tell everybody, tell everything, go ahead right now. And don't forget to mention that the government's fault, world depression, global warming, and the Genesis flood are all my fault too. Oh, come on. Stop overreacting like that. I was joking. Joking. I suddenly realized that I really was wound up too much. No kidding. Your jokes are stupid. And what am I supposed to do every time? Guess as if, if it's real or a joke? Yep. She grinned. It's more funny that way. Oyana turned around and ran towards the square, waving her hand and parting. Still, you can't deal with her in a harmonious way. I sighed and went back to the club's quarters. Electronic was building something with rapt attention. Now I'm done with everything. So I thought you could give me something as you promised. My voice sounded a bit psychophantic, which was enough to drive me, drive me mad. Of course, I'm not insisting, but one minute. He tore himself away from his work and got a pair of buns from the drawer and a classic triangular pack of kefir. Uh, be my guest. Thank you. While I was busy eating, Electronic didn't turn away from his, his device for a second. He was rolling up the wire, which he, I had taken away from Oyana, onto the coil. So what's this? An inductor? A, an adductor? Uh, join our club. You'll know everything. I like how he can't say the word inductor. He looked at me and smiled slightly. I'll think about it. Of course, I wasn't going to join anything, but taking that into account that he had fed me, I had to be polite. By the way, as I said, I have something else. Well, yeah. Wait a second. He went into the adjacent room and came back later after a minute with some kind of package. Ta-da! He gave it to me. There was a big bottle of vodka inside. Huh. I get it. I get it, but it's still morning. Or does Electronics share the motto of get drunk in the morning, take the entire day off? What are you talking about? I'm not suggesting we drink it. We have to clean the optics. Cleaning the optics. Yeah, right. Internally. Okay. I gave him the package back. I'll go then. Come back any time. Of course. The moment I went to, the moment I wanted to have a drink. Walking out, I questioned myself why he wanted to show me the vodka in the first place. Suddenly, my hunger returned again. For sure, a meal of some buns and kefir was awesome, but it's not enough to fill me up. Luckily for me, I heard the bell sound, calling pioneers for lunch. Alright, now, what, what is the next thing? Refuse, do nothing, just stay seated is the next thing. Do nothing, just stay seated. Uh, Slavia, because I like her more than Lena. Thanks to the girls' help. Uh, I don't think it matters. I was about to say, uh, just... You can have it. Forward! Robot. Alright. Keep her going. Almost there. We're flying! Alright, there we go. Uh, do nothing, just stay seated, and then go to Ulyana. There we go. Alright. Save. All right, go to Oyana. I didn't think about Oyana that evening at all. That thing with that thing with the cake, like it didn't even happen. Though I remembered well her resentful, disappointed face. Maybe in some other situation, I would have never have decided to go to her. But now I find reason to ha leave this place and end this stupid hike had appeared. Recalling that Olga told me to be prepared for new tasks, I decided not to ask her for her permission. And after choosing a proper moment, I disappeared into the woods. Night fell on the camp. I mentally, thanked the, I mentally thanked the camp leader for not researching the land too well, since this meant civilization was only a few hundred meters away. Another long walk through the night forest was not in my plan. Soon I came to the square and hesitated. Won't it look silly? Would, what would I tell Ilyana? Moreover, why would I go to see her in the first place? My head was so heavy and full that there was no room in it for the development of any ideas. Yeah, I know he's comparing it to a lot of things. But where should I go? Maybe to, maybe to her cabin? What if she's not there? All of a sudden, something knocked me down and I fell to the asphalt. It's a good thing I had to catch out. I had time to stretch out my arms, otherwise I would have broken my nose. Gotcha! I quickly got up from the ground and saw Oyana standing before me. What are you doing? I couldn't stop myself from shouting despite my best effort. You shouldn't be stargazing, she answered viciously. Uh, what if, what if I had smashed my nose or broken my arm? I said more calmly. Well, neither of those happened. Look, why do you always mock me? I already regret my decision to try and ease her loneliness. Was today's punishment not enough for you, or you, uh, can you even draw simple conclusions? It's entirely your fault. The smile instantly disappeared from Liana's face. What exactly is my fault? Everything. You mean I'm to blame all the time? Yes. She crossed her hands in front of her chest and turned away. Great. I suddenly wanted to get away from this place as fast as possible, but it was because of you that I came here. What? I guess you're quite bored, given that everyone is hiking and you're alone here. I don't care. She yelled cheerfully. Well, if things are that way, what do you want to do? What do you mean? Well, if you came, well, you came here because of me. Such a thought hadn't occurred to me. Although I don't really know what I what I came here for. After such a greeting, I no longer want to do anything. Then it's up to me to choose," said Oyana cheerfully and started to think. 
I stared at her for some time, but then couldn't stand it. Listen, if you are again planning to, I know, let's scare the other. I know, let's scare the others. We'll dress up as ghosts, for example. It's gonna be fun. I didn't find that fun in any way. Enough of that already. I began tiredly, but broke off. Maybe that's not such a bad idea. After all, by the time she thinks it over and gathers all she needs, Olga and the Pioneers will already be back. If I came here because of Ilyana, then I need to play along. Perhaps you're right. What? She was looking at me with her eyes wide open. Are you going to agree just like that? Well, what's so wrong about that? And furthermore, if you insist, she studied me attentively for several seconds and then rattled off. Excellent. Uh, we Then we need some bed sheets. We want to look like real ghosts, don't we? Probably. Uh, you, you go get them, uh, Ilyana announced imperiously. Where do you think I'm going to get them? Take them from your cabin, obviously. It wasn't that obvious to me. So you, so you don't want to? She instantly made a gloomy face. Okay, okay. I recalled the fact that we there were spare sets of bed linen in Olga's wardrobe, so maybe there was nothing to worry about. We approached the camp leader's cabin, and I said to Ilyana, Wait for me here. Yes, sir, yes, sir. She rattled off and saluted me. It seemed that Ilyana was entirely immersed in the game. I quickly found two clean white bed sheets. It's a shame that they're going to get smudged. Here, take it. I handed one of the bed sheets to her. It's too large for me, Ilyana said after twirling it in her hands. No wonder, considering her height. Give it to me. I folded the bedsheet in half and gave it back to her. Much better now. Follow me. She put the white cloth over her head and ran into the forest. Wait. I threw myself after her. <laughs> I like how this is their plan. They're like, bruh, you don't know what, what, what we should do? Sorry, if you're hearing all this rustling, I'm trying to find a comfortable position. My back is killing me today. There we go. All right, there we go. We're going to lean back nice and nice and low. That's better. Just a few minutes later, we were near the Pioneer's campsite hiding behind the trees. Now it was clear that the trick, harmless at first, was taking an unpleasant twist. For some reason, I was sure from the start from the hike would end before Ilyana took any action. But now we were standing 10 meters away from the Pioneer's dress in bed sheets. We didn't look frightening at all. Rather, we looked comical. Get ready. On my command. Wait, wait. Actually, I was joking when I agreed to all this. Think again. It won't do any good. You'll get yourself under house arrest until the end of the shift. And so will I. No retreat, no surrender. Are you ready? On the count of three. I started scrolling through all the possible outcomes in my head feverishly. There weren't, there weren't many of them. First one, me and Ilyana ran out from behind the trees and start the pioneers laughing, resulting in me getting a considerable scolding from the camp leader and possibly something even worse. And Ilyana is sentenced to the highest measure of punishment feasible under the laws of the pioneer camp. Second one, I stay here and observe with the others how Ilyana runs around the glade in a bedsheet. She is sentenced to the highest measure, like in the first option, and I stay in relative safety. Third one, I do everything possible to prevent her from committing this act of horrible moral of moral vandalism, and no one suffers but her self-esteem. It all could have gone so well, but I, neither of those either of those or neither of those thoughts took more than three seconds, or Ilyana shortened the count. So I had to manage to pull myself together in time when she sprang out into the glade, screaming inhumanly. As expected, all of the pioneers laughed loudly. Someone even fell from the log he was sitting on and started rolling on the ground. I tried to save the day and yelled as loud as possible, but Ayana would hear me and not the others. Fool, stop it! Come here! Yeah, that didn't go well. I don't know whether it was my persuasion that worked or Ayana understood that her performance had failed, but she ran in my direction quickly and without pausing hid herself in the forest. I didn't hesitate to follow her. Such a finale left a tiny chance that she won't be punished again. It's good that I didn't join in on that trigger-comical act. Now I need to find Ilyana. It turned out to not be that hard, as she hadn't managed to get far. Ilyana was sitting on a tree stump, crying. I stood still, hesitating. Of course, such an outcome was to be expected, but now I had absolutely no idea of what to do or how to comfort her. And besides, I'd gone back to the camp intentionally, and I had agreed to participate in that show. But it just got worse. As well as that, I was tired. Tired unto death. But uh, at that moment, I wished it would all just cease to exist. I just want to close my eyes and appear elsewhere, preferably in a quiet and peaceful place. But the sight of the sobbing Ilyana obliged me to take action. Good boy. I walked up to her and sat on the ground. Well, what were you expecting anyway? I began philosophically. It, I was sure it was sure to end up this way. You're to blame for everything. You, Ilyana shouted in tears. So, what would have changed if I had sprung out with you back there? Uh, we both would have been laughed at. That's all. You always act this way. Always. Her sobbing was becoming louder and louder, and then she suddenly rushed at me and started pounding on my chest with her fists. Uh, the hits were not were not hard. It was more likely an attempt to take out the despair that had gripped Ilyana, uh, that had gripped Ilyana than a real wish to beat me up. Calm down already, I said firmly. She stopped crying for him for a second and hugged me. 
Maybe nothing would have changed, but it would have been more com comfortable for me if we went together. I didn't know what to say, so I just patted her on the head. Can I stay like this for a bit longer? Yeah. At that time, it, she didn't seem like a dangerously explosive nuclear reactor in the form of a little girl, but just like a little sister of mine who'd messed things up. I wasn't mad at her at all. On the contrary, it seemed I too was beginning to care about the failure of the ghost play acting. It's alright, it's alright. We'll scare him properly next time. Yeah. I don't know for how much longer we sat in silence. Liana stopped crying and I didn't want to disturb her, as she had just uh, calmed down. But I also had absolutely no desire to stay in the forest overnight. Hey, let's get back to the camp. I shook her shoulder gently, but there was no answer. Oyana had fallen asleep. Hey, I shook her harder. No effect. At that moment, I wanted to cry. But why does, why does this happen to me? Why do I always get caught up in these fluid situations, always and everywhere? Even having suddenly appeared in a weird pioneer camp in the middle of nowhere, I don't get to become the subject of an experiment, a victim of a sick cosmic mind, or, or a participant in an intergalactic war on the side of the group of suicide-prone pacifists like a regular hero of science fiction. No, instead I had to spend the night in a forest with a little girl in my arms who was muffled in a bedsheet. Next time, I'd rather have the monstrous experiments. What a baby. I stood up and put the sleeping Ulyana on my back. Maybe there was a way to wake her up, but firstly, I didn't want to. And secondly, one more burden on one or one less, at that point it made no difference. It's good that she's not heavy. At the square I stopped, put Ulyana on a bench, and threw myself down beside her, totally exhausted. Even the little girl's hard to carry for too long. Man, he is such a baby, so delicate. The stars in the sky were shining brightly. Perhaps they gave their light not only to me in the camp, but also shine on the city where I was born and where my old home is. It was as if a pain settled in my chest. I envisioned my old flat clearly, and a detestable burning started to make its way from my stomach to my throat. No, it was not willfulness, more like a sad reminiscence. Because despite all that's happened, I'd felt more alive in the less than five days than I had for the last several years there. And now, I really wasn't sure if I wanted to get back. Only one question still ate at me, how and why I ended up here. It, fired, it flared up yet again in my mind. I haven't spent much time seeking answers or even just thinking about my situation lately. My thoughts were occupied with everyday routine affairs. And now in order to break away and be able to wish to stay here for good, I need to understand the nature of this place. It's just that even a nightingale in a golden cage has a right to know why, uh, how and by whose he got there. We already read this. I don't know how much longer, so small, but she snores so loudly. I sighed, put Ilyana on my back again, and headed to her cabin. I was about to say, I'm having flashbacks. He's, I've already read this. Okay. I had no desire to explain everything to Alyssa, so I just put the sleeping Ilyana on the porch, knocked on the door, and left quickly. Well, that was an interesting decision. I approached Olga's cabin with mixed feelings. On one hand, I had done what I intended to do. I had comforted and entertained Ilyana. On the other hand, the two crumpled bedsheets in my hands looked more like rags left over from some worn-out straitjacket. I opened the door softly and went in. Semyon. Olga was, uh, Olga. Olga was sitting on the desk and it's, uh, sitting at the desk, and it seemed that she had been waiting for me. You want to explain something to me? Well, just don't scold her again. It's my fault. Just like that, I became a hero, to my own surprise. My tongue acted faster than my thoughts. Perhaps some of my best traits, which even I wasn't aware of, had shown themselves. Humanity as opposed to common sense. Really? Having started this, I chose to stick to my decision. Well, it was me who got the bed sheets, and I was standing behind the tree back then. Behind what tree? The camp leader looked at me in astonishment. So what did you need bed sheets for? I realized my mistake. So you're not talking about the forest thing? Semyon, I don't understand you. I wanted to know about why you disappeared in so mysteriously during the hike, and now I would be interested in listening to your bedsheet story. But it was impossible that she and all the others hadn't seen Oyana's performance. The pioneers laughing out loud couldn't have been the only my imagination. Uh, Olga, I'm serious. Didn't you see someone in a bedsheet spring out at you recently? So it was you? She gave me a close look. No, it wasn't me. Couldn't she just tell from my height? But you're holding the bedsheets. Yes. I couldn't understand if she was playing me for a fool or if she really didn't know what this was all about. Olga, let's act like this conversation never happened. I'm too tired for today. All right, go to bed. To my surprise, she readily agreed. That was odd. To, of course, I was astonished by such a reaction, but I decided to use the moment. I wrapped the blanket around myself and turned to face the wall. But I couldn't sleep. There were no thoughts. My head was aching, but I still couldn't manage to fall asleep. I rolled to the other side, and images of the day started to flash before my eyes. I shut my eyes to tight, tight to drive them away, but it didn't work. Suddenly, I heard a knocking at the window. Olga seemed to be asleep. 
I dressed myself and walked outside. Uh, Oyana was standing before me with a tricky smile. How did you manage to carry me to the cabin? Wasn't it hard? Not really. What, what have you come for? I couldn't sleep, and at that moment, bed seemed to be the only place where I could reside with no suffering, which is why Oyana's sudden visit didn't please me at all. How was she? Did you get, did you get scolded? No, I avoided it somehow. That's great then. I always get I always get lucky. That's for sure. My eyes began closing despite my will. It seems that the slumber had finally come upon me. Look, I'm very tired. This won't take long. Close your eyes. This was that it was the easiest thing to do, but I didn't even want to know what she needed it for. Maybe that way she would leave me alone sooner. I closed my eyes. Ha! I knew it. And at that moment, I felt a brief kiss. My eyes opened by themselves, but Ayana was already running away, waving her hand at me. I stood still, benumbed, and I still, and I couldn't even manage to shout anything after her. I didn't know for how long I stood like that, but eventually the night chill cleared my stupor. I shivered and went back to bed. This time, I didn't want to fall asleep. I wanted to think it all through, but my eyes, which had begun to close as if standing before Ayana, uh, seemed to issue a command to the rest of the body, and I fell asleep before I realized what happened. Okay, so that was, what, day five, I think? Okay. Day six. So over the next two days, there is but two more decisions. There is try to stop her verbally, and that's all my fault. That's it. Try to, try to stop her verbally, and that's all my fault. I can't say that my morning was good. Instead, I woke up absolutely broken. The room was filled with a bright sunlight. Outside the window, the birds were lightheartedly chirping. I reluctantly dragged myself into a sitting position and stretched. I slowly started to recall the events of the previous day. A trip, a silly ghost game, Oyana falling asleep, and... An adorable kiss. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I accidentally hit, hit my scroll wheel. A kiss. I blushed immediately. It was so surprising that I'd been knocked out of reality for a while. The main problem is how should I treat her now? At first glance, nothing special had happened, but... Besides, she's the last girl in the whole camp from which one would expect such actions. She seemed to, at me to at least be a little sister, nothing more. <laughs> well, I would start viewing her differently. But for her, apparently, I was more than a big brother. Although perhaps I just imagined all that and there was no hidden meaning, deep motives, or allusions to far-reaching conclusions to in this kiss. Just an expression of gratitude? Don't be stupid. Oyana is definitely capable of extraordinary deeds and could easily turn uh, could turn simple things into complicated ones. Finally, I decided to put off the matter until the time I met her face to face. The clock showed 11, meaning Olga didn't wake, didn't wake me up for breakfast. However, I shouldn't worry. There wasn't much time left till lunch. I took my bag of washing access accessories and went to my, do my water procedures. I didn't meet anybody along the way. Probably all the pioneers are busy with their own things. The place near the basins was just deserted too. Five minutes later, I again stood in front of the camp leader's cabin, thinking of what to do next. Nothing worthwhile having come to my head, I sat on the deck chair and possibly could have stayed there until lunch, but I was drawn from my trance by a familiar voice. Hi. I looked up and saw Slavia, who was smiling at me sweetly. Hi. You overslept again? Seems like it. That's no good. Perhaps. And where are you going? Actually, I was not really interested in Slavia's, in Slavia's agenda for today, but I wanted to keep the conversation going. Well, I've got some things to do. I see. Silence followed. She was about to leave when I suddenly I said, You mind sitting with me for a while? Sure. Why not? Slavia sat nearby. S something worrying. Something's worrying you, isn't it? No. Why do you think so? I can read it on your face. She laughed softly. Not really. Although probably Slavia was right. Something really was worrying me. Obviously, I was worried about last night's events. Listen, do you have any little brothers or sisters? I do. And how do you get along? Pretty well. She smiled widely. And you? No, I don't. I said after a short pause. So why are you asking? I don't know. Just... Do you always do you always understand them? I try to. Sometimes I just cannot make out what children want. Suddenly I stop for a moment. Slavia doesn't know what I actually doesn't know that I'm actually much older than I look. To her, I'm still a child myself. Those who are younger. Why? Well, I cannot always understand the motivations of their actions. They often behave illogically. Weren't you as old as them some time ago? She looked at me with surprise. Of course I was. At that moment, it seemed to me that it had been a very long time ago. And when I looked at Oyana, that time turned into a gulf of years. Well, think of, your, think of yourself at that time. I was different. At least it seemed like that to me. If so, good for you. Savi laughed again. And you? Did you do also do stupid things? It depends on what age we're talking about. Well, let's say the age of 14, for instance. Well, different things were happening, she said thoughtfully. Okay, that's nice, but it still doesn't make things clear. Maybe that's the way it should be. Maybe. Slavi stood up, wished me goodbyes, and left. I closed my eyes and fell asleep. 
Yeah, I feel like your problem, bro, is that in this world, you're 17. She's 14, confirmed now. So, uh, like, you know, let's let this happen, okay? Like, you gotta stop looking at her like a little sister. Otherwise, this is gonna make this really weird for you. The sound of the bell calling the pioneers for lunch woke me up. Uh, although the sound was quiet and was becoming and was coming from far away, my body worked like a clockwork automaton, and in due time, I was standing near the door of the canteen. And that's where I met Oyana. Hi there. Uh, yeah. I, I already ate. She laughed brightly and ran away. I didn't stop her. After all, I had nothing to say to her. I took a meal and was already headed to my favorite place in the corner when suddenly someone grabbed me by the hand. Sit down right here. Alyssa's voice sounded menacing, but at the same time, somehow pleading. What happened? I've got something to discuss with you. She said with a slightly softer tone. Okay. I sat down next to her. So what's the subject? You were that you were there yesterday when she played that dumb prank with the bedsheet. It was a pointless to it was pointless to lie to Alyssa. Yeah, I was there. That's that's she laughed out loud. Why on earth did you do that? Alyssa instantly became serious and gave me a level look. Why did uh, why did you ask her? No, I'm asking you right now, so you have to talk. I don't know. I rasped. Or you better, or you better, you better tell me why didn't the camp leader react? How should how should she react? I think you know. I looked at her skeptically. Well, she just didn't realize who it was. Well, I must admit, Olga's deductive abilities had to leave much to be desired. And then it was you who brought her back last night. Nope, Shakespearean elves did that. I said mockingly. What's the problem with that? No problem at all. Alyssa stared at her plate and started to eat with concentration. Also, she ran off to somewhere during the night and came back in that happy mood. And. Don't you know anything about that? Even if I do, why do you care? She gave me an intense gaze. Well, I do care. I would never have thought that she would be concerned about someone besides herself. If she's concerned about anyone, it's obviously Oyana, bro. Pay attention. Nothing like that happened if you'd like to know. No, it's not about that. Alyssa replied shortly without looking at me. Probably it was a bad idea to bring up the subject. By the way, what's that like that? What do you mean? What, what you just said? What, what, what I just said? I tried to joke around and confuse her. Hey, listen to me. I'm watching you. Oh, oh, I'm so, so scared. I said roughly, took my tray, and left the table. I definitely wasn't afraid of Alyssa's words, even though they sounded like a threat. In fact, I was more interested in her concern for Oyana. Of all the local inhabitants, she was surely the last one you would expect to worry about another person. Except Oyana. How about you read between the lines, you idiot? He's so blind. I walked out of the canteen and into a real furnace. The sun blazed so ruthlessly that nobody could ever stay under its scorching rays. It was time to find some cool and shady place, and the beach seemed like the best place for this. Oddly enough, the beach was not crowded. Perhaps most of the pioneers were scared of the scorching heat, or maybe they just decided to take a nap after lunch. I didn't bring my swimming trunk, so I just sat under an umbrella and began to watch the swimmers. There was no one I knew, and it was better that way, so I had an opportunity to sit quietly and think. Five and a half days have already passed since my arrival, and what has changed? Sorry, I was moving something. There was a couple of unexplained but completely harmless events, and all in all, it was just a regular pioneer camp. And this was making me even more frightened. What's going to happen next? Another day, another week, and what's going to happen after the session's over? I've got nowhere to return to. Maybe in this time, I haven't even born yet, or even worse. After thinking of all this over for a few minutes, I went back to yesterday evening. Strange, but I was worried about it much more than before. On one hand, I wanted to say something to make the situation clear. But on the other, I avoided any meeting with Ilyana by all means, afraid of making a fool of myself with the wrong word or gesture. Don't be a coward, you fool! I closed my eyes and dozed off for a while. Everyone, scatter! <laughs> Everybody, scatter! When I woke up, I saw Lena by my side. How long have you been sitting there? I asked in surprise. Not too long. Strange that she didn't wake me up. Did something happen? I don't know why, but I don't know why, but my sixth sense was telling me that she's eager to say something but doesn't dare. No. What about you? Neither. Are you sure? Of course. I smiled. Then what do you want to talk about? Why would you think I want to talk? It seems like it. No, not really. A long silence ensued. Do you have any little brothers or sisters? No. What about you? I don't. Why would you ask that? So why would you ask that? Sometimes I think that I don't understand children at all. Me too. Lena's face didn't express anything, but it's probably it's probably got to be like that. What do you mean? How should I treat how should I treat him then? Treat him the way you think is right. Well, that's the whole idea. I don't know what's right and what's wrong. The more you think about it, the more you'll regret the mistake. Well, that's true, but it doesn't help. I was somewhat surprised by such profound words from Lena. Of course, she said all that with a trace of shyness or modesty and without inappropriate openness, but still. You mean that I should follow the first idea I get off the top of my head? I laughed. As the saying goes, your first thought is the right one. See, that's what I was just thinking. Like, if your first gut reaction is happiness or whatever, like, follow your gut, man. Like, 
Like, I've learned that with me, for sure. Often my gut says something, but my brain contradicts it. And so I, every time I follow my gut, I'm, it's usually correct. Like, usually with, like, directions, for example. Like, if I don't know where I'm going, but I, like, I can picture it from an overhead view, but I don't know where I am in accordance to it, necessarily. I, my gut will, like, lead me the right direction based upon what I think is right, but my brain will contradict it. Be like, make a left here! And my brain's like, make a right, or, you know, my gut's like, make a right. And so I, I make a right, and bam, I find it, just like that. So you, so you believe, do you believe that? I don't know. Sorry, I had to refresh my throat. I'm dying. Uh, we sat there for some time, then she stood up. Well, I gotta go. Thanks for the conversation. Don't mention it. She smiled faintly. So yeah, that, if only Lena was really like that the whole time. I lay down and stared at the burning sun. Your first thought is right, huh? And what is my first thought? Well, and what if, and what if my first thought was to kiss her back? By the way, what was the first thought that came to me at that time? I tried painfully hard to remember, but nothing worked, and not even scraps of thought surfaced to my brain. However, in that situation, I could only follow Lena's advice since it all happened so suddenly. The sun was, sit was setting slowly, so I rose and went towards the canteen, as my stomach told me that even the participants in such a fantastic story should have regular meals. Somebody called to me at the square. It was electronic. He ran up to me, caught his breath, and said, Semyon. Yeah, that's probably me. Take it. He handled me some kind of key. What is this? It's the key to our clubhouse. And why would I want it? Olga asked me to, considering that I'll not be returning there today. So, so give it to Shurik. He has his own business. So take it yourself. I can't. Why not? Listen, just take it. Why would I need it? What am I going to do with it? You'll give it back to me later. Listen. Well, I gotta go. He shoved the key into my hand and ran. No matter how you look at it, he is definitely strange. Moreover, I didn't pay significant attention to this event and just put the key in my pocket. Hang on, my one of my little things on the back of my keyboard is off. There we go. I got to the canteen even before dinner. Fortunately, it was already open, but no food was being served. It took my favorite. I took my favorite spot in the farthest corner and concentrated on playing with a toothpick. Soon, I got the feeling that someone was standing next to me. I raised my eyes and spotted Olga. We just stared at each other for some time. Do you need something? I finally, I broke the silence. You know, Semyon. Sure, I understand everything, but what? I asked, surprised. Do you think that I didn't notice your absence last night? Absence is quite an overstatement. I'd rather say I just wasn't. I would just went out for a moment. Well, so what? What's the matter? I thought that it was nothing too, but I was determined to check. The camp leader's expression was increasingly heading towards a frown. So have you checked? I still couldn't understand what she was up to. Yeah, I checked. And you know what? For a true pioneer, it is, it is unacceptable, shameful, disgraceful, especially with her. She flushed red, red with exertion. I don't even want to hear your pitiful excuses. A vague idea of what she was talking about dawned on me. So what happened? Would you care to explain? And now you've got the nerve to play innocent. You, with Ulyana. Now it all became crystal clear. I have got two things to tell you. First, I started getting steamed up. Nothing of, what, of that sort happened there. And I am the last one who has any relation to this situation. And you think that... Second, I rudely interrupted her. Who told you that? In fact, the answer was obvious. Ulyana wouldn't wouldn't do it, and if she had decided to once again play a trick on me, she would have done so much earlier. From the time spent here, I'd begun to understand her well. And that leaves only one possible candidate. My guess, Alyssa! What does it matter? No, no, it does. What would you care to explain your behavior then? Olga seemed to be a little taken aback by my vehemence. There's nothing to explain. I quickly got up and headed to the exit of the canteen. Semyon, wait! I, he I heard the camp leader's weak prattle behind me. If you act decisively with her, then she's not that confident. So now I have to get things straight with Olga. Uh, while her pranks uh, had concerned me, or or only concerned me indirectly, I could bear it. Just thinking about it, I even started to consider her not such a bad person. I met Slavia at the square. Do you know where Alyssa is? Yes, I do. What's the matter? Just tell me. My words sounded obviously rough, but it seemed that she didn't pay it any attention. She's at the music club. Alyssa, you're in trouble. Semyon is pissed. Uh, Slavia was right, and I met Alyssa near the music club. However, she was accompanied by Miku. You mind explaining yourself? I didn't waste time on pleasantries. No? What makes you think so? Alyssa gave me a cute smile. Oh, Semyon, hi. How nice How nice you are that you're here, too. Maybe the three of us can play something. I have a new song, and you know, it's funny. I'm sure you'll like it, I promise. Or we can choose something old. Miku interrupted the conversation. Could you... What? She looked at me with the smile of an uncomprehending child. From that moment, I understood what exactly was in had in mind. Little rabbits, teddy bears, pussycats, but no sign of intelligence. Wow, what, what an asshole. I need to talk to Alyssa. I said in a tone that brooked no disagreement. 
Okay, maybe later. It looked like she was upset, though I didn't care. So, I don't understand what you mean, Alyssa said offended. And anyway, I have to go. She turned around and got ready to leave. Hang on. This way. Uh, try to stop her verbally is what we need. Okay. Pause. Save. Try to stop her verbally. Hey, not so fast. She stopped and turned to me. I am not here. I'm not here to kill you. My words sounded like a joke, but Alyssa flinched. Who told the camp leader that Ilyana came to me at night? I don't know. She pleaded piteously. We discussed it this morning, didn't we? She said nothing, but continued to look at me with fear in her eyes. You probably should. And more importantly, what's the purpose of telling a thousand lies? I really don't know what you're talking about. Her eyes filled with tears. Suddenly, I felt that I'd been struck by lightning. What if she isn't guilty? And why did I immediately think of her? Anyone else would easily have seen us at night. And you never know, even though Yana herself could tell anyone. Are you sure? I asked harshly. Yes. I thought for a second, and this time was just enough for Alyssa to escape. Now the only true solution is to talk to Olga again. I found her on the canteen porch. By that time, the sun had nearly disappeared behind the horizon. You came back after all, she began. Olga, could you tell me honestly who told you about it? I've just spoken to Alyssa. It's not her. Uh, Ilyana wouldn't do it herself, so who? In fact, I myself didn't realize why I needed to know. Initially, I was just mad at Alyssa, but now... Well, she hesitated. Some strange girl, but this still doesn't... A strange girl. Well, yeah, not from our camp, it seemed. And why did she tell you about this? How should I know? Olga, but this is... I took a deep breath and turned away. Just how does she have to obviously lie? Although, maybe she's trying to protect somebody? Let's say... Damn, I can't even imagine. All right. I said quietly and walked briskly away from the canteen. I had absolutely no desire to continue listening to Olga's stupid lies, our so-called camp leader. I walked aimlessly, completely lost in thought. You on guard duty? I heard a cheerful voice from behind. It was Ilyana. Nothing special, just seems like there was no chance of finding out who Olga's informer was, and yesterday's incident was hushed up somehow, so I decided not to think about it. What do you have planned for the evening? Nothing, I guess. After all my frantic attempts to uncover the truth, I felt some inexplicable guilt before Alyssa and Ilyana. What exactly the guilt before Ilyana was was completely unclear, though. Then I have a suggestion. What is it? I brought a video cassette from home. Her eyes flashed conspiratorially. Conspiratorially. Man, what a word. And? I couldn't even remember that when the last time I had watched or heard something recorded on cassette was. Uh, with a cool movie on it. Where would we get a VCR here? The... The... Word came to me from the past, and I decided to test whether my guesses about which time period I was in were placed right. At the cybernetics club, of course. There, there's nothing there, I said confidently. What about in the back room? She was right. It could be there. Well, maybe. But anyway, it's too late and everything's closed. That strange feeling of guilt I felt in front of Ilyana wasn't giving me a chance to refuse immediately. We can get in there through a window. She grinned mischievously. Well, you know. Maybe you're right. Wish we could get a key, M mused Ilyana. Wait, but I had one, in my pocket, and I just remembered about it. Now that you mentioned it, yes, I've got a key. Next time, I'd better think before I speak. That's good, then I'll quickly run to get the tape. You you wait here, and I'll be right back. She disappeared before I could even open my mouth. It's strange that she wasn't surprised that the key to the cybernetics club mysteriously appear happened to be in my pocket at the right place in time. But in any case, I, decided, I have decided what to do next. The most right and logical thing would be to not go anywhere near her. But my guilt got to me, though it seemed to me that there could be nothing criminal in watching a movie with her. But on the other hand, with Ilyana, even the most harmless things can turn into a three-ring circus, at the very least. I was already starting to forget about what happened this evening, about my frantic attempts to get the truth from Al Alyssa and Olga. In just a couple of minutes, she returned. Having second thoughts, I looked up at Ilyana and felt a bit uncomfortable. Are we going? Listen, you know, your ideas are, let's say, not entirely safe. Uh, and in the end, everything will end badly again. Are you scared? No, I'm not. It's just a, I'm just a grown man, and I'm not interested in such games. Grown man, she laughed. Indeed, I forgot that I look 17 at most. What makes you think so? I, it's really hard to accept, but I had nothing to say to that. Thinking about it, the whole time I spent here, I did not display any particular foresight, nor life experience, nor cold, balanced assessment of the situation. Uh, though the other question is, did I ever show that in those, or did I ever show those in that life? No, he, no, I doubt it. And in fact, even if I think, I would recall some examples, of course, but... Okay, let's go. I was offended by Ilyana's words that I asked. And what is a grown man in your opinion? One who is responsible for his actions, one who does not do anything without thinking about the consequences, a person who is capable of taking good care of not only himself, but also of others. And all that doesn't describe you, that's for sure. I tried to laugh it off. I'm not pretending to be like that anyway, grinned Ilyana. Yeah, that was obviously right. I didn't possess any of those qualities. But I always thought that not being 17 is all that's required. 
It seems that in general, there's no difference between me and, and other people. And if I wish, I could be exactly like they are. That's true. Is that all wrong? In fact, no, because in this camp, I tried to behave in the most logical, sensible, and proper way. Eh, like an adult. Pfft. Yeah, it's been it's going so well. You're so smart and capable. But if even Oyana says differently, then how can I get out of here? Forget about getting out of here. Suck it up. We went in. It took some time for Oyana to find the light switch. Things are just getting good. Accept it. There is connections, so suck it up. Anyway, sorry. Presto. Well done. Bravo. I exaggeratedly crap, clapped my hands. Hey, stop making fun of me, she pouted. Okay, what's next? Here. Oyana went up to the door to the second room, hesitated for a moment, and pushed it open. There wasn't much space inside. Seems more like this room was used for storage. Boxes piled on top of each other had formed some sort of Alps and miniature. Various devices scattered here and there reminded me of the chaotic brainstorm raging in ahead of a scientist. Bookshelves on the far wall made it clear that this was not a simple storage for unused junk. To my right, there was a TV set with a video player sitting next to it. Interestingly, this was they were not Soviet. I bet they were Japanese. At least going by their appearance. Not very surprising. In those days, well, for more accurately for me these days, imports already existed. What did I tell you? Oyana smiled triumphantly. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen anything like that before? I have. Perhaps I've got a VCR too. Probably it's lying somewhere in the mezzanine in my house. Seems like you're not surprised at all. Well, sh why should I be surprised? A Japanese TV set, a video player, you look like you often see such things. Uh, not too often lately, I agreed lazily. You're so gloomy. Nevertheless, okay, take it. She handed me the cassette. I turned it over in my hands, but didn't find any sticker or labels on it. It's funny, he, 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 he keeps calling it cassette. A cassette is a music thing. Like, the that is a uh, is a tape. So, but you know, maybe that maybe that's my label, I don't know. But that's what my family always referred it to as. And I'm so old, I remember cassettes as like the tapes and of course the, you know, the actual tape like the movie version. I actually I remember using all those things because I was I'm a 90s kid. Anyway, so so what's on it? I don't know exactly, mused Oyana. But I'm sure it's something very interesting. I guess we'll find out. Soon the logo of a well-known American film company appeared on the screen. It's probably like 21st Century Fox or something. <laughs> Here, watch. Oyana even started fidgeting impatiently. I'm watching. A few minutes later, I realized that the tape contained a famous film from the 80s. It was about a robot from the future sent to kill someone in the past, so in the years in between, a hero wouldn't be born. Interesting coincidence. You could say I was sent from the future, too. So what? My mission is to kill someone among the local residents? I couldn't help laughing. What's so funny? Oyana looked at me reproachfully. No, no, nothing. It seems to me that you don't like the movie. The movie's alright. I've seen it several times. How can that be? Her eyes widened in surprise. Well, my friend gave me a cassette. Hmm. Oyana stared intently at me. Anyway, keep watching. I pointed at the screen. He's like, I don't want to get into it. I'm, I'm from the future. When the film was about halfway through, I heard someone trying to open the front door. It is said that when a person has one of their senses weakened, the others are amplified. I was quite blind, but I could hear perfectly. Lights off, I whispered. What? Turn the lights off! Aliana realized that there wasn't the time to argue with me and rushed to the switch. Meanwhile, I pressed the pause button. I heard footsteps in the other room and saw a flashlight flickering under the door. I wonder who decided to sneak into the cybernetics club at night. They're not here. It was the voice of Olga. Uh-oh. Soon the front door slammed shut and I sighed with relief. See that? Again, that's because of you. What? Aliana stared at me in surprise. Why else would she come in here at night? She's definitely searching for us. Alyssa likely doesn't care about your absence, but I'm registered as the camp leader's cabin. She thought for a while. Well, so what? So what? Uh, why are you constant, constantly looking for trouble? It's almost as if you like it. It's more fun this way. Uh, is it fun when you're constantly scolded and punished? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. She laughed merrily. Eventually, there are also rules. Well, uh, well, up until now, you evaded some con serious consequences, but who knows what could happen next? It could all end badly. You grumble like a granny, she said, offended. And who said recently that I could not be called an adult? Forget it. Let's finish the movie. I decided not to argue with it. In the end, we were we, had, we we are already on Olga's list, and an hour later, an hour earlier, does it really matter? No, it doesn't, so suck it up and enjoy the moment. Uh, at each scary scene, Ilyana jumped, screamed, and grabbed me by the hand. It was not I was not so keen on the film, but still pretended that I was also interested. Apart from the evil robot, there was a good man sent from the, from the future to prevent his evil deeds. Maybe I'm not here with the goal of becoming a ruthless killing machine, but on the contrary, to change or prevent something? To prevent some event, for example, or to stop someone from doing some wrongdoing? I feel like what you're here to prevent is from you not being such a loser. I feel like, like you were sent to the past to fix you. The analogy is fairly interesting, but is not based on any real facts. 
I don't have a shotgun in my hands, and I'm not wearing a leather jacket, and I haven't got a motorcycle to ride. Isn't this, uh, what's the name of that one? It has Bruce Willis in it, and he's like the older version, I think. I didn't get to see it, but it was like, you know, teleportations and futures and stuff. I wonder if that was a remake of whatever he's describing. If he's even describing something real. I don't know. I don't even have sunglasses. Look, look, the next ca chase was with shooting and the destruction of various types of wheeled and propellered vehicles was unfolding on a screen. You think the good guy will win? Of course I knew the answer. Obviously, a good guy, good always triumphs, she said seriously. If we consider that Ilyana often succeeded in her silly ventures, the meaning of the word good gets seriously twisted. Wait, but, you, but you've already watched it. Yep, just wanted to know your opinion. Soon the film came to an end. During the final scenes, Ilyana ran around the room trying to get a better view of everything happening on the screen without missing anything. Huh. She gasped with relief at the ending when the ending credits started. Liked it? You need to ask? Of course. That's good. And I could see you didn't, really. She squinted slyly. Well, it's a film for kids, after all. Really? Well, yeah, so what? Nothing. She yawned and sat on the floor with her back against a pile of boxes. It's probably time to go to sleep. I'm tired and I won't go anywhere. As you wish. I, be I better go then. Hey, wait! Oliana immediately jumped up and grabbed me by the hand. Will you leave me here all alone? Well, if you want, should I carry you to your cabin? I said uncertainly. In the end, I had already experienced that. I was already experienced at that. No, I want to sleep here. She rummaged in the box next to her, pulled out some sort of blanket and pillows. Again, the same story, I sighed. Just think, Olga is already looking for us, and if we spend all night here... Well, firstly, she's looking for you. That has nothing to do with me, laughed Olyana. Even if that's so, then you'll be caught too. Uh, what makes you say that? And even if I do get caught, that's okay, I'm used to it. Uh, why are you so stubborn? It's only a couple of hundred meters to your cabin. As well as that, you couldn't say that Ilyana was completely exhausted. I'm so tired. She wrapped herself up in a blanket, turned away from me, and began to diligently fake loud snores. Okay then, see you tomorrow. I tried to leave, but Ilyana grabbed my hand again. Well, now what? She didn't say anything. She looked as if I'd scared her. Right then, what, what I should do was completely unclear. Our little cassette adventure was idiotic from the beginning, but now it was beyond my comprehension. I had no idea what the logic behind her actions was, what the meaning and motivation was. Yeah, what could it be, I wonder? It's almost like she's trying to make excuses of you to stay with her, you stupid idiot. But she's like, you know, she is the way she is, she can't just say it. He's so dumb. However, despite all this, I couldn't firmly say no. Something stopped me. Maybe a sense of duty or pity or patience that must have shown must be shown when communicating with children. I love how he's trying so hard to pretend he's so much older than her. But he's really not. Okay, what do you want from me? Go to sleep with me. Seems like I've seen it somewhere already. Well, let's assume I turned off the light and nestled beside her. There we go. The moment has returned. Good thing it was summertime, otherwise sleeping on a wooden floor would not be the best idea. The lack of a mattress is not even worth mentioning. Why did you agree so easily? I could I could hear resentment in her voice. You asked, so I did. In fact, I was completely convinced that Ilyana will fall asleep quickly as always, and I'll carry, carry her to her cabin. Basically, it's a good plan, despite the fact that I will again serve as a beast of burden. Hey, talk to me. Just sleep. You're the one who wanted to. Just talk. About what? Tell me something interesting about yourself. Funny stories from your life. My life is not that action-packed. Nothing to recall at all. Even if I had something, telling her was not the best idea. Nothing at all. It can't be that bad. I turned to Liliana. She was lying with her eyes wide open, staring at the ceiling. It can, trust me. But that's so boring. From time to time, she was silent for a while and then smiled and said, But here you but here you have fun. Oh, that's true. I laughed. Will you will you remember the camp? First I need to get out of here. Of course I will. And the others? I will. And me? And you. I said it with all all with an absolutely even tone, and to be honest, without even really thinking about the mentioning meaning of her questions. And I will, and, and I will, whispered Ilyana. Immediately, I felt her head drop, drop on my chest and her hand wrap around my neck. Comfortable? Yeah, she murmured. You haven't found a better place? She shook her head slightly. Well, let her lie like that. In the end, maybe she'll fall asleep faster. <laughs> I bet he falls asleep faster. Probably no more than five minutes passed before I decided to check on her and t lightly tugged on her shoulder. What? So she, a she asked without looking up. I noticed an unusual note in her voice. Why, why aren't you sleeping? L look who's talking. The time was passing treacherously slowly. I decided to wait at least another 10 minutes before the next time I checked, but the seconds seemed to be hours. My eyes began to slowly close. I struggled to stay awake. I blinked for a moment and woke up, only to realize that my state was close to unconsciousness. Maybe just close your eyes for a minute? What's so terrible about that? Yes, of course. Sleep is like, do it, do it. <laughs> Alright, so the next one we're looking for is That's All My Fault, by the way. And immediately I drifted off. Huzzah! I ship it. I ship it more than more than Lena and Alyssa. Day seven. And obviously this time, we, uh, yeah, day seven. 
And we're looking for, it's all my fault, right? Isn't that the name? Uh, that's all my fault. That's what we're looking for. There are probably worse things in life than falling asleep while being cuddled by a little girl. And now the door opens and armed men leap towards us. I can't make out what they're screaming, but their intentions are clearly far from good. No, I'm not scared at all. Rather, I'm embarrassed or even ashamed. When I opened my eyes, it took me some time to realize where exactly I was. It was dark in here. Only a dim light was gleaming under the door. Why do I make storage rooms without win why do they make storage rooms without windows? Although obviously that's the way it should be, but why on earth would anyone bring a TV set and a VCR in here then? I cursed the architects of this building in my mind and shook Liana by her shoulders. Come on, get up. She stretched and we were lying together, and I could see her sleepy eyes even in the dark. What? Let me sleep. Liana tried to turn away, but I firmly grabbed her shoulder with my hand. I don't know what time it is, but regardless, it would be smart of us to get out of here. Not now, later, she whispered, still half asleep. I said, Wake up, come on. I jumped up and easily pulled her to her feet. Uh, she groaned Oyana with frustration in her voice. I started to look for the flat for the light switch, but then suddenly heard footsteps outside the door. My heart sank. Why so early? We have a truckload of work to do, no time to waste. You know what we have to do at all before the departure. All right, fine. It looks like our two amped up cyber 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 techs cyber people are playing a visit are paying a visit to the clubhouse before the break of dawn today. Shush! I whispered to Oyana. And what's the? She didn't manage to finish her sentence as I silenced her with my hand. Well, I understand all that, but at least, uh, but we might have at least waited till after breakfast. Oh, do you have something else to do? Not really. I heard some hesitation in Electronic's voice. Sure you don't want to head out to the library bright and early again? Hadn't the slightest intention, he replied fretfully. Oh yeah, sure, if you say so. Soon the work kicked off behind the door. I could hear hammer strikes, machines rattling, Electronic's buzzing. Electronic and Shirk were discussing their own matters, so I wasn't paying much attention. I was more interested in knowing when they'll finally leave the building. Rather soon, breakfast time is coming, but if we take Shirk's passion into consideration... Let go of me! Oyana finally wrestled her way out, but didn't raise her voice at all, after, after all. Uh, didn't raise her voice after all. Why can't we just leave? She asked under her breath. And what do you think? Is that it's all fine? Then well, what's the problem? Well, we've spent the whole night here together, and it's obvious what they'd assume, considering I've taken the precaution of closing the door. So, what do you mean, so? I, t I tiredly sighed. Just trust me. I know that it doesn't matter to you, but it does to me. Okay, fine. We'll keep hiding here, agreed Oliana resentfully. I was prepared to wait for a long time if necessary, but barely a couple of minutes later, the front door opened and somebody came in. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Morning. It was Slavia. Just wanted to ask if you happen to have any sticky tape. We do, somewhere, replied Shurik thoughtfully. Ah, take a look in the back room. Uh-oh. The words gave me goosebumps, and I grabbed the door handle in a stranglehold. Slavia approached the door from the opposite side and tried to pull it open, but I was standing against the door with all my strength. It's locked. It can't be. We never locked that room. Let me try. Sure, kinked the door handle, but nothing happened, although it took a lot of effort to for me to hold it steady. Oh, it's stuck. Give me a hand here. In a few minutes, they were trying to open the door together with the electronic. I grasped, grasped the door handle as if my whole life was depending on it, but regardless, it was a short struggle. My hands quickly gave out, and I let go. Yep. Well, you should have made this a little less awkward. Like, I don't know. Something, but like, I feel like this isn't better. The door slammed open and bright sunlight blinded me, so I couldn't see these startled faces of Electronic, of Shurik, Electronic, and Slavia for the first few seconds. Um, good morning. Morning. Oliana was standing behind me so I, so that I couldn't see her, but I could feel the embarrassment in her voice. And what are you doing here? Asked Shurik, almost as if he wasn't surprised. Well... To tell you the truth, we were watching a movie. Ayana brought a tape, and you have a VCR. Shirk distrustfully stared into the depths of the back room. I gave Ayana a nudge to the side until she got the message and displayed the tape. And what's the movie? I have a barely visible grin across Electronic's face. Just a regular film, a thriller, the latest thriller. Then I imagined what he and the others were thinking right now, and I was overwhelmed with rage. If you think we... Nothing like that... Hang on, pause. Uh, that's all my fault, is what we're looking for here. Pause. Save. For safety. That's all. It's all my fault. No one, nobody's accusing you of anything, said Slavi without looking at me. At least there's one sensible person among all present here. Yet, she added under her breath. What? Everything was exactly as he told you. Oyana joined the conversation. We were just watching a film, then felt sleepy. It was so late. We didn't think anything. Just a stupid question. Come on, enough. Electronic tried to put it off with a jest. I think Olga will be the judge here. Slavia said in a cool voice. Hey, wait, why take this to the camp leader? Who else? But you see, we're telling the truth. I'm not the one to judge. Damn it, then who? You have seen everything with your own eyes. That's for the camp leader to decide. Slavia said quietly and turned to go. Just wait. I appeared before the door in a single bound and blocked her way. Listen, 
This is none of my business. Slavia was trying to avoid my gaze. It seems like she's also uncomfortable about the situation. I'm just obligated to... Who are you obligated to? Why do you need to do this? Because she was unable to find the words to finish. So, so I told... So you don't have to go. Anywhere. You don't have to tell anyone anything. No. She said nervously and then raised her hand and gave me an intense gaze. Sorry, Semyon. Just leave her. Let her go. I turned my gaze to Ulyana. The fra that fraction of a second was enough for Slavia to slip out of the clubhouse. Wait, just wait! I yelled, her I yelled at her as she ran, but it had no effect. Pursuing Slavia in a futile attempt to prevent her from going to the camp leader made no sense. If she intends to, I can't exactly tie her up. She can't prove anything anyway. Ulyana chuckled. Who cares whether she can prove anything or not? Don't you understand the position in all this? Uh, in any situation you're, invol you're involved in, your guilt is a foregone conclusion. Moreover, in a case like this... Well, we are responsible together then, she smirked trickily. Exactly. I felt I left the building and sat on the stairs. Well, we'll be on your side, just in case, right, Shirk? I think so. I don't clearly understand what happened here, but presumably nothing w about worrying. Uh, okay, we're going, we're going for breakfast. Thanks, gentlemen. You guys are the real MVPs. You're the bros. Too bad Simeon doesn't appreciate you, but I do. Soon we lost sight of them. Let's go and eat as well, Ayana said cheerfully. Food, food is all you think about. Why bother crying? What will it change? She was right about that, at least. We'll just have to wait for the camp leader's decision. Let's just go. Yes, yeah, Semyon, don't be such a baby. We headed to the canteen. All of the camp had gathered for breakfast, except Olga and Slavia. It might be, might be for the best, I guess. What, what are you thinking about? Oyana asked me cheerfully when we took our food and sat. The same thing. Come on, stop worrying about nothing. Maybe it's nothing for you. Well, really, what was particularly bad about that? Every situation can be, mis can be interpreted from different angles, and especially if you have a reason. Come on, what's the worst that could happen? You know, our camp leader, she's a bit eccentric. Except, well, maybe, well, maybe so. But we didn't do anything like that, nothing at all. Or anything at all. I hope she believes that that's true. My relationship with Ilyana had improved dramatically lately. At first, I only saw her as a naughty, ill-mattered child, but now I started to see the good sides of her character. Although there weren't too many. Rude. But, and now, just when everything was starting to work out, a hard conversation with the camp leader loomed ahead. Maybe I dr just dreamt everything that happened, and Slavi's reaction this morning was just caused by surprise. <sniffs> Enjoying your meal? Olga was hanging over me. She looked at me menacingly. Yes? Yes. Would you mind explaining your behavior? You mind explaining what? Well, for example, how you happened to be in the Cybernetics Club utility room? Where'd you get the key? What, have you, what were you even doing there? I recalled the circumstances in which I obtained this cursed key. I should speak to Electronic about that. If Slavia had sold you our, our version, we were watching a film. Olyana uh, claimed seriously. The whole night, the camp leader asked sarcastically. Then I fell asleep, and Semyon, and Semyon stayed with me. And so there was no chance for you to go to your cabins. Not even a tiny one. And what are you going to say? Well, it sounds really stupid, but she's right. You expect me to believe that? Well, it's the truth. I can't really accuse you of anything. The camp leader started slowly. But on the other hand, the entire situation is beyond normal. Pioneers must not behave this way. And there are too many inconsistencies in your story. We get it, I agreed fatalistically. I'll do the following. Oyana, you're on detention. You'll be confined to your cabin, and I'll decide what to do with you later. I looked at Oyana attentively. Contrary to my expectations, she didn't look upset. Sir, clearly, I do not think this is your fault, but to be fair... Great, you know where to find me in case you need me. She stood up instantly and headed to the exit. Olga didn't try to stop her. There's always too much trouble with her, and she's got you into all this. I don't really get what she's got me into, and you seem to be too harsh on her. Show me another pioneer like her, the camp leader laughed. Uh, when she receives detentions for misbehaving, that's another story. But here... Actually, I don't really understand what was indeed going on, but my duty is to look after your moral character, and this situation is suspicious. Highly suspicious. And how long are you going to keep her imprisoned? I don't know. Olga pondered for some time. Today is the, today's the departure, and in these circumstances... What? What departure? I jumped at the word. The term is ending today. This is the last day. What? It was the only response I could, I could squeeze out. The last day, meaning I'll finally be able to leave the damn camp. Maybe it's time for my suffering to end, and I'll get back to my ordinary reality. Why so suddenly? Sudden for who? I talked about it at the lineup. She has a point. At the lineups, I was usually sleeping or looking around. I didn't really listen to the announcements. No surprise. And at what time? At about five. Don't forget to... Sorry, I, that was too fast. Don't forget to get ready. I already have... I already... I hardly have anything to pack. She stood up, took, uh, took a tray, and was going to leave. So what's going to happen to Ilyana? I don't know yet. I told you. She'll probably, she'll probably leave later. How's that? Not with everyone? Well, yeah. Is that normal? I was truly surprised. What's wrong with it? I don't know about wrong, but it's quite strange for sure. Well, I still have work to do. I'm like, okay. I, hug aimless I dug aimlessly at my porridge, which had gone cold long ago. Departure. The possibility of getting out of here. But on the other hand, Oyana. 
I myself, I myself felt guilty before her. In the end, she was pointed while I, at the same time, wasn't. That's not fair. No, it's not like I wanted to share her misery, but I don't think that it's fair that she sits there locked up. Well, there is still some time before leaving. It should be quiet enough to make the situation clear. First, I decided to talk with Slavia. I hope she's calmed down. Yeah, Slavia's kind of a tattletale. Kind of a, she's a snitch. And you know what they say about snitches? <laughs> snitches get stitches. <laughs> They're like, whoa, what's gonna happen to her? <laughs> I had gotten used to finding Slavia at the square, so I went there without any doubt. Why exactly there? Because in the camp, I predominantly met her there. But there wasn't a single soul near Genda's Haven. I stood there for a while looking at the monument, then headed to the library. It made sense that Zenya could know where her neighbor is right now. After knocking at the door, recalling my previous experience that was not a useless mannerism, I went in. Z Sorry, drinking. Zenya distracted herself from her book and looked closely at me. What do you want? What's wrong? Why do you, why, why do you react like that? I can't even come in? What? You came here for no reason? I doubt you wanted to read something. Well, no. The comics, the classics of Marxist-Leninism wasn't my favorite literature. I wanted to know where Slavia is. Why do you want to know? She said that as if she was sure that the conversation is over, and thus she proceeded with her reading. Well, since I'm asking, clearly I need to know. Should be on the, should be on the pier. Zenya answered indifferently. Thanks. Learning what I wanted to know, I hurried out of this str stronghold of malice. Yeah, Zenya has a tough spirit. At least I have issues understanding her. That's one way to put it. On the tier, some pioneers were pulling boats into docks while others were running around with oars or ropes. After looking closely, I noticed Slavia, who sat qu quite far away near the water. Cleaning up, I asked the most natural question that came to my mind. Yep. She answered without turning. Listen, I want to talk about Ilyana. Yeah, well, yeah. Without Honestly speaking, I had no idea what to talk about. Slavia found us in the storage room, got it wrong, and told everything to the camp leader. Now, it's not her concern anymore, if you think about it. On the other hand, it would be a waste of time to talk to Olga now. Maybe I should just subconsciously wanted to understand Slavia's reasoning to be able to absolve her somehow? So, what'd you want to say? Well, Olyana got punished. Maybe she won't even leave with us. No wonder. I just wanted to explain to you that nothing special happened there. Frankly speaking, I don't know. I just had to report everything. Sh so, you did. Did you... Did it leave you anyone better off? I mumbled to myself. Of course, I'm not sure that it was right, she said confusedly. Well, what's done is done. Do you think it's possible to get Olyana freed from house arrest? You're worrying, you're worrying about her so much. Slavia finally looked at me and smiled. Not about her, about justice. Well, I was a bit confused. I found the right answer. Well, you know our camp leader. I do, that's for sure. Just wait. She'll calm down eventually. Yeah, I guess that it was the best decision. Yeah, you're right. I stood near her in silence for some time. Slavia didn't seem eager to keep on talking. Still, there was some sort of incompleteness, but faced with the idea of this uncomfortable situation lasting for several hours, I decided not to be a burden. All right, I'll go then. So, oh, see ya. She smiled. Snitch! In the middle of a square, I stopped to think. There's still a lot of time till the departure, and I have nothing to do. Just yesterday, when it seemed like I was stuck here forever and had lots of time, even though there was actually very little, I felt I need to think and act faster. But now that I've only got five hours left till I leave this camp forever, I have not the slightest idea on how to spend them. I decided to visit Oyana. Attaboy. After all, even if she isn't allowed to leave her cabin, that doesn't mean I can't pay her a visit. I knocked gently. You're not welcome here. An angry voice sounded from behind the door. I pulled on the handle and answered. Hail, prisoner. Oh, it's you. Oliana said disappointedly. And what? Am I the only one who isn't welcome here? I tried to smile. Why'd you come? Well, I thought that you'd be bored here all alone. I'm fine. W where's Alyssa? As you can see, she's not here. Come on, why are you so angry? In the morning, you were in such a better mood. Angry? Me? Not me. Not me, that's for sure. You have nothing else to, to do, so you came here, right? Yeah, my bad. I sighed theatrically and hung my head. Well, sit down then. I sat on the opposite bed. So, tell me something. Let's come up with a way to prove to Olga that we did nothing wrong. I did nothing- I did nothing wrong. Uh, I did nothing wrong, Ilyana corrected me. You see, you seem to have nothing to do with it. Okay, let it be. But why? A tricky question. It seems that we're, we've swapped our roles. I was suggesting a stupid plan while she was a voice of reason. Well, perhaps we did nothing wrong. What's the matter with you anyhow? I'll just stay grounded for a couple of hours and that's it. We have to put depart soon anyway. She flopped down the bed and stared at the ceiling. Well, sure, but I tried hard to cheer her up, but it looks like I haven't succeeded so far. You want to do something maybe? It's lunchtime already. I took a glance at my watch. Yeah, right. Here's a job for you. Since I can't go out, since I mustn't go out, go and bring me something to eat. Sir, yes sir. I saluted her and hurried out of the cabin. Attaboy, Semyon. You're starting to be, you're starting to not be such a horrible person. 
Recently, I started to think that finally something has clicked in Ilyana's mind. Maybe the punishment had an effect on her, or possibly it was something else. And my attitude towards her has changed. Her wrongdoings used to make me feel nothing but irritation, but now they also understanding and a sort of sympathy. Aha! That a boy, he's getting it. After all, I used to be a child too. You stop labeling her as a child, she's 14, not 7. Like, and you aren't exactly 40, you're 17. Like, shut up. Sorry, anyway, I'm so sick of her, him, like, talking you down like she's, like, 6. Alright, because she's not. Anyway, sorry. Perhaps if one explained to her what is right and what is not, she might be able to avoid many mistakes. You think she hasn't been taught the whole right versus wrong thing? Really? Like I said, she's not four. In the canteen, I had an argument with the cook who refused to give me a double serving. However, everyone in the camp already knew about Oyana being grounded, so eventually my powers of persuasion won over our dietary standards. Huzzah! Soon I was sitting in Oyana's cabin, tucking away meatballs with potatoes. Just like a last meal. What are you talking about? Well, every death row prisoner has a right to make a last wish. Thus, my last wish is a lunch like this. Hmm. To my surprise, the food was really delicious. What would your wish be? Well, to not to be executed, of course, she laughed. You can't. Why? If you can wish for anything. Well, you can, but within certain limits. That means it's not anything. Well, okay, then it's not anything. Well, then that's not interesting. And I believe being a death row prisoner is hardly meant to be interesting in the first place. I grinned through my teeth. I wouldn't know. I never went, never went through that experience. But if you think about it, that's almost my situation. This camp is this camp is my cell. For several more hours, I'll stay under under arrest, and I'll, then I'll face uncertainty, just like I would, just like I would after death. The only difference is that I had more options. If I wanted to attend lineup, then I'd do so. If not, then I didn't. What are you gonna do next? What do you mean? Well, after the camp. She looked at me in surprise. Back to school, of course. Yeah, only for me, leaving this place is like crossing a, a barrier, a frontier, the end of something, and a beginning of something else. A week ago, it was terribly hard for me to realize that I'd been pulled out of my usual world and brought to God knows where. But then I got used to it. And here we go again. Basically, the only difference is that now I face not a sense of fear and horror, but a blunt, sinking feeling of uncertainty. And you? Well, I... well, I'll find something to do. Something? She burst into peals of laughter. Yeah, what's the matter? You should have gone to a circus school to be a clown. Why? One can't help laughing when looking at you. But why? You always act like some kind of a martyr, a new messiah for all the Russians. Well, that was quite a bit of truth in her words. That's the truth. I have my reasons. I mumbled and turned to face the window. What reasons? Various. Why are you so curious? Have you forgotten that I'm a child? She grinned archly. Well, half an hour with you is like a terrible torture for me. Look who's talking. J uh, you're just one really nasty-tempered person. That's the truth. What makes you think so? You're always deep in soul-searching, trying to find out something, analyzing everyone around you. I gave Ilyana an amazed look. I would never have expected such a little girl to be capable of such a mature judgment. Fourteen, not four. And? That's it. At the very least, I know how to behave myself, and I don't and I don't end up grounded. It's not a matter of chance, she grinned. Yeah, sure. If I last no if I last night what? Or if last night, like what what was that was that a typo? Or if last night, not if I. If last night, she stopped short. Last night what? Nothing. No, finish what you started. She just opened her mouth when st uh when steps were heard behind the door, and a second later Olga entered the room. There you are. That's even better. She seemed confused and lost for words. Well, I reconsidered this morning's incident. It's not like it's become much clearer, but it doesn't look like a big deal. So, Oyana, you're officially not grounded anymore. If only you did that right from the start, I muttered. Did you say something? Nope, nothing. Departure's coming. Time to pack your stuff. Saying that, she left the cabin. Now you see how it all turned out. Yep, I sighed. You gonna pack? Yeah, I guess so. And you? It's not like I have much to pack. Indeed, it was the truth. Care to help me then? Okay, sure, why not? She started to pull her clothes out of the cabinets and stack them on, the, on her bed. Watch it, you'll mess up everything. It's okay, I'll wash them at home. T-shirts, uh, skirts, skirts, shorts, dresses, shoes, trainers, underwear. The pile of clothes was growing and growing. It was such a list that I just like got like lost in it. You really brought all this stuff here all on your own? Considering Ilyana's constitution, it was hard to believe. Yes, of course, she laughed. Come on, give me a hand. Uh, we started to pack up the clothes into a big bag. I tried to pack things carefully at first, but after realizing that it's pointless, I resorted to just stuffing everything in to make it all fit. At last, there were no more clothes on the bed, and we even somehow managed to zip up the bag. So that's it. Yup. I looked at the clock. It was about 40 minutes until the departure time. You know, it was fun. Meaning? Well, the last week was fun. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I said absentmindedly. Don't you think so? Why? It sounds so sort of insincere to me. Well, I must admit that it's not exactly I'm not exactly walking on air, yeah. But what didn't you like? It's not like I can spit out everything at once. You see, a few moments were, how can I put it, a little unexpected? Blah, you're so boring, said Oyana and turned away from me. Well, what'd you expect from me? You sound like you've got absolutely nothing to remember later. 
Yeah, that sure there sure there sure is plenty to remember. I gleamed. Yep, that's what I'm saying. She looked closely at me. That made me a bit uncomfortable. What now? And me, will you remember me? Sure I will. Everyone. Everyone and you, you most of all. I saluted I saluted, springing up to attention with my hand over my heart. That's better. So, however, do I really have something to remember about her? Yeah, we had a lot of adventures, but who is Ilyana for me? Just a, just a nosy kid from another reality. On second thought, do I really care that much about my situation now? From the very from the very first moment I appeared here, everything changed tremendously. So right now, I was just curious what's going what's going to happen next. Sure, the unknown is not the most pleasant perspective, but I must admit that it's a breathtaking one. Whether I'll turn I return to my world or not is not up to me anymore. It means that I don't really have any choice. I have to adapt to the local living conditions. And one of these conditions was sitting right in front of me, smiling broadly. You know, you're not as silly as I first thought. Why'd you think I'm silly in the first place? She said in an offended tone. Just kidding. You and your jokes. All right, this time. Let's go. Or uh, maybe he said, all right, it's time. Liana said happily and pointed at the bag. Yup. I shouldered her belongings. The weight almost made me bend in half. What a sissy. I was thankful for the fact that the bus stop was just a few hundred meters away. I shoved her stuff onto the bus, then hurried to get my own humble luggage. After some time, all the pioneers were here. Everyone is here? Began Olga. You're leaving on our camp today. Yeah, she said this. Keep going. Turned away. Emotional. Wasn't expecting it. Perhaps the first time. Soon enough, everyone boarded the bus. I took the last seat next to Ulyana. The first row was taken by Slavia and Zenya. Then a little closer to us, Lena, Miku, Electronic, and Shurik were playing cards. Alyssa slouched in her seat alone. Two rows from us. There was no partner for her. It turned out a bit embarrassing for your neighbor. It's fine. You helped me to get ready and you brought my stuff here. I looked at her closely. It seems this little demon has changed her attitude towards me in a radical way. It, could it be that I'm a friend to her? An odd, an odd word that seemed to have lost its meaning for me ages ago. I don't recall. I can't recall any of my acquaintances when I still had them who I could call friends. Maybe even back when I was at school. And now someone considers me a friend. Anyway, what does it all mean to me? I always felt more comfortable thinking about abstract stuff, distant perspectives, and global matters than of simple, ordinary issues. I noticed. And indeed, during all the time I spent in the camp, I managed to become close friends with Ilyana. She awakened these long-forgotten feelings in me. Because this is what it means to be buddies or friends. I like how so hard they're trying to get it through our heads. I smiled and tussled her hair gently. And what's that for? She puffed her lips. Just because. Pervert. Will you marry me when I grow up? Sure. I'll hold you to that. Okie dokie. Let let's go join them at cards. Why not? We gathered around the suitcase that was being used as a table. Soon Alyssa joined us. I was laughing a lot, cracking jokes, and just enjoying being in a state one usually calls happiness. A simple happiness, here and now. Right now, this bunch of pioneers that I've managed to befriend in this short week were a million times more important to me than finding out how I came to this world and how I ought to get out of here. In the end, should I even bother trying to get back? Hey yo, we're having a moment everybody. It was getting dark. The game was long over, and the pioneers had returned to their seats. I had no idea how long it would take to get to the district center, but it seemed like an eternity. From beyond the bus windows, only pitch blackness uh, was looking back at me, almost consuming the entire world, pressing to only the size of the Icarus cabin. Anyway, the surroundings were the least of my concerns now. I was enjoying the moment. It seemed that this reality is completely normal. And does it really matter now? Does it really matter how I got here if things turned out this great? I became another person, and I met new friends. What are you thinking about? About life. And how's it going? Just awesome. Oyana left quietly. I don't leave. I don't have a place to return to, so I can choose any path in life I want. Yeah, we'll part ways soon, and I'll probably never see most of them again. But we'll stay friends forever. Oh, a pleasant warmth flowed through my body. I felt like a kid again. Oyana put her head on my shoulder and quickly fell asleep. Sometimes you may feel tired, not only because of hard work or sad feelings, but also because of fun, joy, and happiness. You may, prob you may probably even want to continue, but have no energy to, with your soul demanding time to rest and your body asking for calm. I fell asleep with a smile on my face. Alright, we are just about done with this little shindig. Oh, good heaven. I wonder if he's going to stay in the 80s or if he's going to go back to his regular time. Man, my fingers hurt. Uh, it felt like I hadn't slept at all. It happens all the time. You just close your eyes and you fall asleep. Your hand, your hour, the hour hand makes several turns. The morning comes and you wake up, but it feels like you just blinked. That's the truth. So true. Ah, oh, he's back home. I yawned so wide that I almost broke my jaw and I jumped up because of the pain. Something was wrong. Although not something, everything was wrong. I was back in my apartment. But 
but how could this be possible? I began to panic and I started to run around my room in the hope of calming myself down. Physical tiredness can often overcome an emotional one. My head was empty, fear and terror took over my whole being, and some kind of a song was floating in my mind, maybe a prayer or maybe just an incoherent jumble of thoughts designed, if not to calm me down, then to at least distract me from my panic. It was about half an hour before I collapsed on the floor, exhausted, and fixed my eyes on the ceiling. It seems like I had not gone anywhere. The old chandelier looked down at me un unkindly with its dusty lamps. The cracks in the plaster, yeah, his, par his apartment's run down, we get it. Uh, but it, so there's something, something about a dream, but it can't be. It just can't be. I spent an entire week in that pioneer camp. I was definitely there. I remember everything perfectly from my awakening aboard the bus right up till the departure. Neither dreams nor hallucinations can be that real. Somehow I stood up, went to the kitchen, filled a glass with water, and returned to my room. The blood was still hammering in my temples, but at least the terror of the first few nights was gone. Uh, the first few minutes, or they, or had just taken a break. I concentrated on the last thing I remembered. It was a departure from the camp. The night, the bus bouncing over the, the bumps, the dirty, murky glass beyond which uh, almost nothing was visible, and the pioneers. I had been absolutely positive that I would never return, or just didn't think about it. Anyway, I was preparing for our arrival at the district center in a few hours, and I was already considering options for my further actions. Or not? Damn it. I roared and pulled on my chair with all my hair with all my strength. I can't remember. The last hours in that world merged into a monotonous mirage, as if a something or other. Uh, but it's not that bad. Wait a minute, why would it be that bad? On the contrary, everything is fine. I would even say perfect. I've broken free from that goddamn world and returned home. The most important thing now is not to end up there again. It might happen. Surely it could. But it might not happen as well. Indeed, I have nothing to worry about now. Everything will be fine. Obviously, I was just seeing things. Exactly, I was seeing things. It doesn't matter that everything felt that real. Something like that can't just happen. It can't. I uh, I claim with all due confidence that it was just can't. Modern science claims it's impossible. Not allowed. I laughed loudly. What an idiot. An inner voice tried to stop the verbal diarrhea spour, uh, spout, spouting God, uh, from my mouth, but it didn't succeed. It seems like my speech and thoughts were separate were separate to exist on their own, independent from each other. My brain prompted to, to calm me and try to analyze the situation, while my tongue simply tried to ease the stress by throwing new and new meaningless words into the air. Finally, I was somehow able to pull myself together. I pulled the curtains open and looked out the window. I really don't get how his world falls apart in any new transition. Like, it's so annoying listening to him, listening to him spiral way overly dramatically. I don't understand. The Night City looked exactly the same as it did a week ago. The view brought my mind back to reality, at least to some extent. After all, if everything is now normal and nothing suspicious or supernatural is happening, then wasn't it just a dream? Essentially, there were only two options now. I can agree that it was a dream and calm down. Or I could trust my own feelings and accept that the camp, the bus, and the pioneers were real. Either way, whatever I choose, I won't get any answers. It's funny, I was looking for these answers for a whole week, or at least pretending to, and found nothing. But I broke free from, what, what, weird, from that weird world anyway. But what now? The enigma remains and additional questions have surfaced. In the end, I was exhausted and fell onto the bed. In a few seconds, I was snoring blissfully. Good. When you're asleep, you're a little more tolerable. Pause. Good lord. So tired of reading. Much time has passed from the moment I spent the time at the, the camp, and a lot has changed in my life. The first week, I was racking my brains, trying to summarize in detail everything that had happened. Creating graphs and diagrams, writing to forums, discussing paranormal phenomena. I even planned to visit a psychic. In the end, it resulted in nothing, just as, just as one would expect. It's no wonder. I was just a human being, but these events obviously were the affair of a supreme mind. If a caveman found himself in the early 21st century, even he would understand more than me. I, I so not true. Well, at first he would think that the cell phone that trans- Oh, we don't care. But one can get used to it. Maybe if he completed, yeah, more about the caveman that doesn't exist. It's basic, exaggerated example, just as unreal as everything I experienced. That's why I didn't bother to even read it, because I knew it's overly exaggerated, like all of his examples. It's unlikely to ever understand how it worked or who was behind it. Uh, and I doubt that I could ever get used to it if it were to happen again. But one question tumbled over, uh, troubled me ever since. Why? Why me? What did I, or did I not, do to deserve this bad, or good, luck? Sure, in sci-fi novels, wonders often occur in quite, to quite ordinary people, but that was just a matter of chance. But I was absolutely positive that these events have occurred for some reason. Just like a random sci-fi hero, yeah, more examples. But in the future, no one knew him. Everyone thought that he was just a madman. But in my situation, they were, they, were, they were expecting me at that camp, or at least the little camp leader was. How should I respond to that? Maybe I was picked out at random to be studied later on? Even so, the question why not only still stands, but rather becomes more important. I doubt, I disagree. 
Uh, after not finding any sufficient explanation, I returned to my usual existence. But now I, I wasn't just sitting at my computer 24-7, wiping the F5 button free of dust. New interests came into my life, but what they were I couldn't tell myself, and suddenly I wanted to get a high education. Not to find a job, and not because it's necessary, just because I remembered how much fun I'd had during the first year of education. Chatting with classmates, with course mates, uh, days of lighthearted, youthful fun, plenty of the energy that I'd lacked so much over the last few years. A truly great man once said, any man who reads too much and uses his own brain too little falls into lazy habits of thinking. It's hard to argue with that logic. An ordinary man who will sit around, oh my god, for instance, there's more, but feeling too lazy to open a book, there's more, uh, and even there's more examples. Uh, more examples. Sometimes I thought that it was the influence of the camp. One can't rule out that possibility. For all seven days, there was there I was participating in social activities, verbal communication with others in, uh, in amounts that were before would have caused terror and severe introversion to me. On the other hand, it's not so easy to change one's personality in a single week, especially for someone as stubborn as me. But it is easy to point them in a new direction, show them a guiding line. However, I had never believed that it would be possible with me. Anyway, I enjoyed these changes so much that I tried not to think about their causes. What the hell? No one could, would ever worry about the why if he managed to hit the jackpot by betting his last pair of trousers. That's a weird example. In summer, I re-enrolled at university and I studied, uh, and I studies started in autumn. Time passed. I in eagerly attended lectures and seminars and studied for tests and examinations with a level of enthusiasm that I wouldn't have expected from myself. I managed to become a part of a group with surprising ease. Although I was older than most students, it didn't trouble me. But maybe, maybe it's because of my natural immaturity or changes in my personality, I didn't know for sure. Most likely the answer is somewhere in the middle. The joy of communicating with people lost too many years ago returned. It was easy to get along with others. Their problems didn't seem so distant and trivial to me. Normal life, which before I had considered just a great depressing mass, started to shine with new colors. Sometimes it started uh, it seemed to me that I had started uh, that I turned into a doll, became one of a billion identical tin soldiers standing in straight rows on a shelf at an inner toy shop. But in this shop, apart from the glowing more examples, my place used to be among these broken toys. And while some of them could even could take refuge in charity drives or an orphanage, my only fate was being dumped and recycled again. So I couldn't help enjoying such changes in my life. Do you guys feel enlightened yet by all of his all of his examples? It was the last lesson of the hardest subject this term. Most mo most students didn't like it because of its difficulty and the hard to understand teacher, I suppose. But I found a kind of pleasure in dealing with tables, graphs, and diagrams. Counting the figures by pieces, I arranged them in columns and lines in the right order, summing up, subtracting, dividing, and multiplying, and using them to get a precise picture of an event. Uh, no number could avoid my attentive gaze. All of them could be captured. We get it. He's doing math. After his arrival, still doing math. Uh, still doing math. What are you thinking about? Reluctantly, I stopped writing and gazed at my classmate. Taking notes on the lecture, as you can see. Oh, uh, just screw it. Just read the work uh, workbook afterwards. I'll read the workbook as well. I'm always astonished by you. What's so astonishing? You're planning to gain a first-class diploma, aren't you? Never, never thought of it. Uh, don't tell me you really find it interesting. I remembered that just a moment ago, I'd imagined myself emblazoned on a banner borne aloft by a regiment of digits and couldn't help smiling. Uh, you won't even need all this stuff. Something will, something, everything will be needed, at least for general development. <laughs> it's not true. The classmate grinned sarcastically. Bet you never read a single book in your whole life. So what? He asked challengingly. Just stating a fact, and you were always somewhere up in the clouds. He was right about that. Although I regained part of my lost social skills, I often slipped out of touch with reality, dreaming of something else. You say it like it's a bad thing. And there's nothing wrong with not reading books either. Human beings can't, I have only material needs. I said philosophically mocking him. Oh, you're such a downer, yawn. I agree with that guy. You're a downer. The lecture was approaching its end, and I began to pull, plan out the rest of the day. Need to, need to buy some groceries, and later on, later finish a project and send it to the client. Then I got to write down the, these notes. And then in the evening, I can just read or watch something. Unless someone phones or writes to me, there are no, there are no urgent matters, so I can spare time for my, for my mates. Oh, five full minutes ago. I looked at my phone and realized that it was exactly a year after I returned from the Pioneer Camp. My soul felt warmer after such thoughts, and I smiled blissfully. It's not often anymore that I recall those thoughts. Obviously, one can't just forget something like that. Those moments of something bizarre and extraordinary that were engraved in my memory forever. Normally, even the happiest moments fade, and just reminiscence of them remain nothing more. But the week spent in the camp was different. I remembered everything in perfect detail. The terror of the first few minutes after walk waking up in the bus. The first day, hard and full of surprises and amazing acquaintances. Cheerful, carefree pranks with Ilyana. Just, that t just take that trick with the ghost, for instance. The best Soviet co uh, comedians would envy it. 
and the pi and the pioneers had such expressions. They were dying laughing. It sure would be nice to meet Ilyana in real life. Well, she is not always perfect. She's hyperactive, and she doesn't have any idea about good manners. But one doesn't need such a, such a sincere, uh, carelessly cheerful, and energetic person very often. Meet, not need. I think maybe she gave me some of that energy energy to me. The bell rang. My classmates stood up and said their goodbyes and left. I started packing my extra my books and more books into the backpack when I suddenly heard someone's voice from behind me. Here she comes. Excuse me, is this the thirty fourth lecture hall? There's a sign on the door. No, there's not. The girl's voice sounded offended. Someone must have removed it. So it is the thirty fourth. Yeah. At least I closed the back. At last I closed the backpack, raised my head, intending to stand up. Hello, Yana. A girl looked terribly familiar. Have we? Yeah, I thought the same. She looks very surprised. But I don't remember where I could have met you. Neither do I. What what year are you in? First year? Ah, still pretty much green. The girl smiled. Everything is still ahead of me. As if I'm already past everything. And what about you? Fourth. So it is so it's difficult to study? For the first year it is. I knew it. She said in an upset manner. But it gets easier with time. It's always easier when you get used to it. Sometimes I'm too lazy to do things. Yeah, that also happens. Do you still have any stuff from the first year? If you share it, it'll be easier for me to prepare for exams. Obviously, I had nothing. My first year had finished a long time ago, but I suddenly felt a strong desire to ask for her phone number, so I lied. Yeah, maybe, but I'll have to check. That's great. We exchanged our phone numbers. My name is Semyon. What should I call you? Olyana. And then I realized who this girl reminded me of. Exactly. She's Olyana, just about five years older. For a moment, I was lost for words. What? It's an ordinary name. It was That, that was Lennon's name, she said, pouting. No, just, have you ever been to a pioneer camp? When I was a kid, why are you asking? In the blink of an eye, all the events that happened in the camp flashed in front of my eyes. So it wasn't a dream. Although they were just some summer camps, not pioneer ones, Oliana added. So you weren't wearing a uniform? The one with the red neckerchief? Of course not. Fashion police alert, she laughed loudly. But why are you asking? I was about to tell her everything, but then I realized that she'll just consider me a psycho. After all, this girl was much older than the Oliana I remembered. Maybe she just looks like her, with the same name, and the same hairstyle, and the same hair color. Obviously coincidence. Uh, I had a dream, and I think I saw you there. Uh, kind of, kind of deja vu. Deja what? It's when one sees something for the first time, but believes he's seen it before. Well, now that you mention it, her face became serious. I think I've seen you somewhere as well. I think I've seen you, or, or definitely, sorry. Maybe it's that thing you just said. An interesting coincidence, don't you think? I don't know. Anyway, I'll give you a call. See ya. She laughed and ran out of the room. Appearance, behavior, way of talking, she's definitely that exact Oyana. So, does that mean the dream is coming true? I can't help but enjoy it. And above all, I'll see this forever cheerful girl again for sure. Hey -o. He meets Oyana IRL, but this time she's 19 and he's 22? He's 20 something. Because before they were they were three years apart, he said she's five years older, so he's so he's 22 and she's 19, basically. Every story is a beginning and its end, and there's the usual end. Oh, dear lord. There's another two and a half hour one. Man, these things take forever. It, it's it's fine, but I'm getting burnt out. I'm so sick of being stuck in uh, freaking Semyon's head, to be honest. Ah. Uh, Alright. Next one is Miku. Uh, what is this? I don't even... And that's the name of it. So this is a special route, but it will have appeared now that we have done uh, everyone else's good endings. Uh... Let's see. Huh, there might be two of these things. This is the first of the special routes. You'll have to finish at least one of the good endings. Afterwards, it will um, automatically unlock Miku's route. Huh, it says like Miku slash Masha, slash Masha ending. So I'm not really sure what that means, but we'll figure it out. That's tomorrow's issue. So yeah, that was, uh, that was... There was, um, not Semyon, what's her name? Olyana. There's happy ending for Olyana. It was certainly something. Uh, it's, it was okay. Honestly, I, I probably still liked it better than Alyssa and Lena's, to be honest. Just because, uh, I like Olyana more. I didn't think that was true until I got to know everybody. And now I, I think that's definitely true. So, now they'll get their happily ever after IRL in the real world. Uh, mostly, I'm getting burnout on being stuck in Semyon's head. Really tired of him. And so, <laughs> so it's getting rough. And these characters, I am not very invested. Uh, there is a few of them I like, for sure. Um, I, but again, I'm just trying to work towards this cool cat girl chick, whoever she is. I want to get to know her. And then, most of all, the harem master ending. That's the one I want most of all. So... 
We're getting there. We're almost done, I swear. We're almost done. I can feel it in the forest. So we only have a few more to go. And from here, it gets really good. Because now we have Miku uh, or Masha or whatever that story is. Uh, but then we all, then we have the really good ones. We have that cat girl, whoever her, whoever she is, and then we have the harem ending, which is the one I'm most excited for. So, we'll get through it. We're getting there. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that salty. I'm just burnt out. I'm sick of reading. It's the same story too, so it's like torture. It's so slow, but we'll get through it. So that there was the not living the dream. There was attack on pedo bear. No idea why it's called that, but whatever. Probably get dragged into the street and shot by Google or you know YouTube for uh, for even putting that in the title, but I'm still gonna do it. Whatever. Anyway, so that that's another one down. Well, the, you know, well the tomorrow there'll be another one. Uh, I think I, a positive anime review will be coming out very soon. I'm probably gonna record the uh, the audio today. I might edit it tomorrow because uh, spreading it out tends to make things easier. I might edit it today or tomorrow, but. Uh, it sh it'll be coming out soon, so you can expect one of those. And then, of course, today will be part one of Saints Row 4 on the Xbox One. So, very excited for that. Pretty stinking hype. So, lots of good stuff. Anyway, that is going to call for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the content today, and we will talk to you guys later.